All right, great. Now we can actually start since I have managed to locate my missing phone, which means that uh, I can actually monitor chat while we play. Um, unfortunately, I still do not have any kind of more effective setup than propping my phone up on the back of my keyboard since uh, I need a second screen and my usual uh, second computer screen is currently doing duty as uh, the only TV in the flat, so... Right, we've explored almost all of this game now, as far as I can tell. I'm pretty sure this is the last major zone, because we've defeated three of the four main bosses. Ah, Ethan Winters. Welcome. I didn't think you'd make it past Daughter Moreau, but I suppose you survived worse back in America, hmm? I like you. I'd like to speak to you about Rose and Miranda. Oh, come on in. Don't worry. It's not a trap. That sounds like something someone is planning a trap what would say. <laughs> yes, uh, Heisenberg is the fourth of the four lords, having we have defeated all of the others. This I don't think I'm gonna walk in there just yet. I think I'm gonna explore some this secret side path that is apparently actually blocked off. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um definitely in the last little zone there was a secret side passage like this, but it was traversable. We defeated Moreau by exploding him significantly with um, a wide variety of landmines, pipe bombs, convenient gunpowder barrels painted red in video game tradition. He was in a large, slimy place, and then he died a large, slimy death. As befits a fishman. Is this a... I'm not as good at tanks as I am at guns. Is this one of the old Soviet tanks? I was wondering if this was, uh, like an old, like, post-war munitions factory or something. But yeah, so we have, sadly, defeated Lady Alcina, Lady Dimitrescu, the first of the four bosses, and then we defeated, uh, I cannot remember her name, but she was the creepy doll lady. And we have defeated Fishman, thus defeating several classic horror movie monsters in this classic horror movie pastiche. Donna Bienavento, correct, Amundo. Yes, of course we're on first name terms with Lady Dimitrescu. Um, I've Alcina guts splattered all over the floor, so really what else is there? It's, there's, you don't really get more intimate than brutally murdering someone in a gothic castle. But uh, Moreau, I think, is the... I feel like each of these characters has been less interestingly fleshed out. Um, they really put a lot of their effort on um, Lady Dimitrescu. What base is what? What base is this? Uh, I don't know what you mean. So, having uh, yeah defeated each of these less fleshed out characters, they've kind of gone back to trying to develop more... Well, you know, have you met, like, giant women? Sometimes they just, they want to be, you know, pampered and treated and uh, allowed to be the pillow princess for once. Everyone assumes that the taller a woman is, the more dominant she's going to be. She might have a dominant attitude, but maybe she really just wants to be conquered. What the hell? Mia? Truth hurts, don't <gasps> He has magneto what? powers. I don't imagine bullets Join would be a problem. Me. Take me out like the others, and then he gets going. Save Rose, right? I'm healing my daughter. Look, you, you, you got the soul. Something else. Shut your fucking hole. Sorry about that. <laughs> Take a seat. Listen, Ethan, you're being played. What are you talking about? You think this is a game? Hey! I said sit! <sighs> Lady, supersized bitch. Ugly, a psycho doll. An amoronic freak. Don't you get it? It's a test. 
to see if you're strong enough to be a part of Miranda's family. I don't want to be a part of Miranda's family. Neither did I, but here we are. And I'm next in line, right? Kill me, move up the chain, well, fuck them! I don't give a damn about your personal issues. I just want to fix my daughter. <laughs> so do I. Do you have any idea how powerful a kid is? Even Miranda's scared of her. Last time, you freak! I swear to God! You and me, then. Together, we can go save Rogues, and then we can use her to grind Miranda into paste. My daughter is not a weapon. Fuck you! <laughs> Last chance. You don't want to find out what's in that hole. I'll take my chances. You're a few. Well, you all called it, but you didn't call the interesting twist. As always, I don't like to try and talk over. I, I try not to talk over cutscenes, but. Oh, it's Chainsaw Charlie. Wait, hang on. Well, in 1947, there was an airman who was very enamoured of his, uh, of his aeroplane. And you see, the two of them fell in love. And, uh, resulted in this peculiar individual, who's led a very peculiar life here in, in Transylvania? No, Romania? I think that's what we decided on. This seems like a problem for me. This is what it looks like when you fall in a blender. I think this is only my third death now in the entire game. Does he just march at me? Is that just it? I'm going to assume that there's like a loop I can lead him in a circle around, but... You are all much funnier than I am today. I'll okay, give you that much. Oh, there's- Ah, okay, there's a hole. A Star Wars-style garbage shoot. There's always a Star Wars garbage shoot. Oh, it's literally the Star Wars garbage shoot. I thought the pastiche was, uh, going to stick entirely to horror, but apparently we're just retreading the greats of the 70s. But, uh... I, I actually, yeah, I really do like that design. It's very, it's very, very silly, but it's uh, a little bit of the high, high camp silliness that has been missing from this as a Resi game. But, um, I thought that was him again for a second. I do think that uh, my predictions about whether, whether this is, you know, referencing some kind of deep-seated discomforts in, uh, in Ethan about the various different anxieties that these different monsters represent is still extant because this guy is 100% Ethan's fear of his own latent attraction to men. After all, he won't shut the fuck up about things like fucking holes and uh, so on. And he's so sweaty and greasy, it's... it really is just masculine... masculine sexuality. Oh my god, are these cyber zombies now? This is fantastic, we've upgraded to Doom. Not any better at ducking though. I mean, Plain Engine Man definitely represents the um, weird sexualization of aeroplanes that you see in certain communities on the internet. After all, we have no idea where... Ethan's laptop went after the opening of the game. Someone just made a hand gesture at me that indicates something about the hand, which is clearly commenting on Ethan's hand, but I don't know what she's trying to tell me. 
Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Everyone has this secret latent desire to fuck heavy machinery, up. like... I've got to get upstairs. Like, the nature of fetishes is things that are, like, huh, vaguely appealing in a sort of a strange abstract sense to most people getting, like, hypersexualized in the minds of very specific people. And I guarantee you there is a whole subset of people on the internet who are into the idea of fucking heavy machinery. I've- I have seen- I have seen the specialized Twitter profiles, like... These people exist. Can I not take this map? B4. Materials. B5. Disposal. B3. Manufacturing. B1. Storage. B2. Electrical. F1. Garage. Entrance. You see, even you have- even you have an aspect. Are you in- are you just in the lift now? Okay, that's cool. It looks- so I guess the safe room is mobile, I can move it around. Uh, B5 inaccessible, B4, B3 and B1, so B2 is also inaccessible from here. It's- honestly, I love the design of this location, but where the fuck are they getting this many people? We've already seen that a whole village of people got turned into werewolves, a whole castle full of servants got turned into vampire thralls, there's zombies everywhere. This was not that big of a village. Where the hell are all these people coming from? Assuming those are like people people and not like... Can I get a closer look? I'm sure it's just a spike through them, but I cannot help but notice that continuing the metaphor of this whole sequence being referential to his fear and shame about his attraction to men, these guys look... I mean, what is this? Let's be real. That is phallic imagery if I've ever seen phallic imagery. Welcome, Ethan. I've procured some new items for you, Mr. Winters. Got some good stuff on sale, stranger. Is there anything I don't I haven't gained a single thing to sell to him in all this time. But he does have, I think. Yes, okay, so this is the new handgun, which is supposed to be the handgun you take through to the end of the game. The shotgun I don't care about. This is the new shotgun that is better than either of the previous shotguns, which also we will be taking into the end of the game based on a very small amount of spoilering that I looked up. We have no idea what the Duke's deal is. We have no clue whatsoever who he is or why he's here or what he's up to. Because, as I said on previous streams, uh, this is an intentional sort of retread of Resident Evil 4 in the context of uh, the previous game's retread of Resident Evil 1, which means that um I'm surprised you'd part with this so early. Which means that we actually have this random trader in the place for no reason. And what does he do? Well he trades us things. More important than anything. How did he get here? Anything, don't know. What's he doing here? Also don't know. Leave Is he on our side? Here. Don't know. I mean he looks like money. If we're lucky, maybe there'll be a, uh, a DLC I'm with more content. I just- I'm upgrading these literally at random. Um, Delighted to. I don't have... Actually, probably power is the most sensible thing to upgrade, because the faster you can you kill something, the more resources you retain. Uh, so next up will be the shotgun, if I can get the upgraded shotgun this from him eventually. He is the very portrait of a... of a money man. I've got- there's so many- I've never even seen finest fish or quality meat, so there must be a whole chunk of this game left. Beyond this factory alone. I really thought we'd find some fine meat in, um... I've got one finest fish. I thought we'd find some in, uh... The Butcher's House last stream. Well, he has a completely different attitude and accent and aesthetic. To the trader from Resi 4, so I don't think he is the same guy. Like, uh, if he decided to go kind of like full. Oh, I can't use it right now. Naturally, of course. Every time I think this game is going to open up and give me uh, a wider choice of locations, it does not. I should have known there would be a linear path. Yeah, I'm having fun. Um,. You don't- there's no obligation for you to be here, you know, you don't, uh... I'm just happy to... I can hear something snuffling. 
Oh, I should try my new handgun. I should get more bullets for my new handgun to try in my handgun with my new bullets with my new handgun. Well, this, this is just a man who destroys everything. He's the most destructive man in Eastern Europe, and he's not even from here. I love their ridiculous cyber headdresses. It reminds me a great deal of the iconic, um, like, weird headband designs that you got in a lot of, like, a lot of the Claremont X-Men comics in the mid-70s and the 80s. Kind of, Wolverine is released from... Wherever it was that the Wolverine stuff was done to him in, in this thrilling reveal, and then he's just got a big, like, cyber box with some red lights on it on his head. Oh, it feels like a stretch. Um, but... Yeah, the Weapon X helmet, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's like there's not enough power. This seems like it's going to be another one of this game's traditional, and indeed Resident Evil's traditional find the object that unlocks the door that is in front of you puzzles. Oh, there's a lot of, a lot of these guys around. Actually, this is the perfect time for this. You know, it says a lot about a man how willing he is to just shoot someone in the throat with no real warning or explanation. It also says a lot about the design of this game, that these guys don't react to your bullets, they just... Sometimes they stumble randomly. You can just pump bullets into them and they won't stumble, or... You can stand there and do nothing and they'll stumble multiple times in a row. It does seem to be completely just randomised rather than actually having reactive opponents. I mean, if I run out... <laughs> I've been playing this game for many, many hours now. This is like the fifth stream, I think. So... Okay, clearly I need to find a key for this. So, you know, if I run if I run out of critical interpretations for this game, and let's be real, I have said a lot of things about this game by now, then, um... Holy shit, it is Weapon X. Then why not just talk about, uh... Actually, it is weird that these guys are entirely... Okay, so I find a mould, I cast something in the mould, then I put what I cast in the mould in the door. That's bound to be what's happening here. It's funny, after all of the trauma this man has had about mould, here he is, needing to find mould for his own purposes. But yeah, it is odd that the werewolf guys are unrelated here, but the zombie guys are here, like... Oops. I think that... I think that any bullet will break a head. Uh, a break a head armor thing. But if I want to headshot them to kill them in one shot, then I need to use something more powerful. So I think it might be smart to break their, their head armor with the bullet, with the, the handgun bullets, since that just deals with them and then switch to the rifle to one shot them. That's probably the most efficient way of dealing with these guys. Oh, I've got so many lockpicks. It's been so long since I found a lock to pick with my lockpicks that I picked. That was weird. <laughs> For a second I thought there was going to be a lockpick in there. Well, we don't need to theorise about it being uh, Breath of the Wild because we've already established that it is in fact Resident Evil 1. <gasps> okay, I was only joking earlier but it straight up is starting to look like these guys have robot drill decks, which is not something I have not seen before in media. Uh, that is an idea which has existed. Oh, it's on his hand. That's disappointing. Well, I guess this... Maybe this army of drill guys represents his trauma about him losing his fucking hand, since... We've really, like... We've run out, basically. We've gone through all of the traumas in this guy's life, over and over and over. We've run out of traumas for him to have. So he's caught up with the traumas that he's had in this terrible place now. I don't know if you could hear that blood up noise of my Discord. I thought that I shut my Discord down. If you did hear it, just let me know and I will go close it. Well, hmm, I wonder what his weak spot is. This thing's fully automatic. It looks a lot like a scorpion, actually. 
I'm not sure if it's actually a real gun design. The, the gun designs in this game seem to be a bit more cheerful and characterful than uh, some of the previous ones. A little bit less design based on real guns. Looks like you're not the chairperson anymore. Looks like I've succeeded on my combat drill. Um, I suppose I was supposed to think, oh no, and try and get past him, but it seems incredibly easy to just get him stuck on the chair and deal with him easily. Like I have been saying all the way through, this game it implies that it's more mechanical than previous games, and then instead of actually having mechanics that make sense, it just it doesn't. You know, instead of having a good complex combat system where things react to you, things are just bullet sponges. I am running out of bullets to put in the sponges, though. Although, I suppose, if, I, if, anyone, if I'm ever going to find lots of rusted scrap, it's going to be here in an abandoned factory. Do machines like this exist? Oh, of course it's a relief of a horse. Seems useful. It was also weird to me that the uh, the boss themed around werewolves is also actually themed about horses instead. His insignia is a horse. Like, the fishman had a mermaid, that makes sense, you know. The, uh... The... Oh, there's more guys up here. The creepy doll person had a, uh, what do you call it? Um, a sun and moon emblem, which I kind of think is... Possibly referential of like, uh, oops, you know, the two laughing faces and other kind of traditional theatrical things. I can't remember what the Dimitrescu, Dimitrescu, Dimitrescu? I can't roll my eyes very well. Um, what their thing was. I love that you're just talking about horses when I'm clearly talking about Robomen. That looks that looks super shootable. Is that shootable? Hmm, oh, I should reload my Magnum. Is this oh I don't but I don't have a key. I don't have a horse key yet. Am I supposed to go back? Oh there's a ladder. I'm dumb. <laughs> There's always a simple linear direction to go, because this is Resident Evil 7. 8. Counting all of the Resident Evil games, I think this must be about Resident Evil 12. Like, just counting mainline games that aren't numbered, like, uh... Ow! Like Code Veronica. Which is the real Resident Evil 4. This is embarrassing. I love the noises these guys make. This is how you get ahead of the competition. Although I'm wondering if it'd be more fair if I gave them a heads up. Looks a lot like my old course advisor. That one was a bit of a stretch. Uh, the thing about leading the zombies into the machine is that I cannot restart the machine, so it would be cool if that's something you can do, and it looks like they got past this one just fine. I mean, you know... Your noises are more adorable than zombie noises. That's the fundamental core of this. Oh, hey, actually, they did get crushed. Look, these guys got squished. Let's see if how many of these. They should slow down with each one. Also, what the fuck is the mechanism here? 
I shouldn't criticize the logic in this game because it's clearly not a game that cares about logic in any real way, but what exactly am I smashing that's causing this? Are, this, are these fuses? Is this where fuses live? I am refusing to engage with this entire system. It's nice to see that the um, yellow means interactable painting system established in the village and the quote-unquote medieval, even though it's definitely not actually medieval, castle has been established throughout this entire region. It's really, uh, really helpful of these guys. I wonder if it's for the benefit of the zombies staggering around. Something's gonna chase me through there, I guarantee you. This is locked. That's a hint of some kind. You never have these little windows if they don't mean anything. I don't think the orange parts look biological to me, they just look like uh, hazard lights. Oh, it's guys. Look, it's dudes. Can I... These are all gonna wake up and chase me. Garen fucking to it. Maybe not right now, but at some point. Oh, it's a shortcut. Of course it is. It's always a shortcut. Oh, interesting. It looks like I might be moulding more things. Pretty sure that just leads back to Duke. I mean, it would be a great time for a landmine if they started chasing me. I'm not going to go wasting them before that happens. This must be smashable, right? This is probably trying to tell me. They've done this in different ways every single time they've done it, which I find extremely irritating from a great game design point of view. Have consistent iconography or have everything be interactable in a logical way. Don't have inconsistent iconography for certain interactable things. Based on my experience of this game so far in Resident Evil in general, there's going to be a door ahead that I have to power with this, but as soon as I power it up, all those guys are going to wake up and come fight me. And again, that is the perfect time for a landmine. Then uh, the flaw with that is that I, if it's not, I can't go pick it back up again and then I'll have wasted a landmine. Or perhaps not. Oh, this only leads back around to exactly where we were before. Mechanical soldier, soldat, version 1.0, fully grown male corpse used, removed heart and implanted cadeau. Muscle simulation via electric shock was successful. Brain dead, so no high cognitive ability, only moves by destructive instinct and then stops. Version 1.01, .01, attached headgear to the cranium, co electrodes confirm stable brainwaves. Experiment 1, lichen flight, was dismantled and eaten within three minutes. Issues with destructive and murderous capabilities. Destructive instinct is one's instinct to destroy. I don't see what it's that uh, confusing about it. Version 1.1. Replace lower part of arm with drill. Not enough output for effective movement. Need live bodies, perhaps. Version 1.15. Implanted Kado reactor into the chest. Output greatly increased. Experiment 2. Lichen fight. Destroyed three lichens in one minute. Good results, but issues with reactor durability. May stop functioning if reactor is destroyed. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I mean, I figured that out already. Was I... Was I supposed to have been running away from it this whole time and come in here, find this note, and then think, ah, shoot it in the giant glowing weak spot. That's how we deal with it. The kind of lack of credit this game gives me is astonishing. Like, I'm good at games, but I'm not, like, the world's greatest gamer. Like, I uh, I guess I spoke about this last time that I, I understand the need to design games to the average person playing it, not the people who are most game literate, because any game might be someone's first game and nobody likes to buy something that they then can't play because it's too tough for them, but uh, I think they overtuned it because they very much were doing that with this game. Oh, fuck. Game as the previous game, as opposed to the previous game. Hi there. Would you mind getting stuck on, on some convenient machinery again? Your, your buddy did that too. It was really helpful of him. 
It's nice that he has this kind of refract refractory time where he he can't do anything with his drill for a bit. You know, he's got he's got to rest and get his breath back, baby. I promise. I promise. I'm normally better than this. That was a weird animation. Yowza! Am I am I dead? I feel like I should be dead. I'm fine. Cool. That seems unlikely, but whatever. How many more hits does he need? There we go. I wonder if luring him here would have blown this open. The use of this creature is to kill lichens. Um, unfortunately, they were only testing it on lichens, so they clearly did not think to test it on extremely determined... Wait, what the fuck? I, I picked up a big coggy thing, but I don't have it in here. Is it treasure? Why can't I switch? That's weird. Uh, treasure. Okay, this is treasure. That's ridiculous, but whatever. I th Straight up, I thought that was supposed to plug in here. I didn't... <laughs> That's so dumb. That's so silly. You have to use this giant cog, not the other giant cog, which is only usable for one very specific thing, which is treasure. I mean, ultimately the real, I think the what they're implying the purpose is, is that the werewolves are not controllable. The werewolves have a pack instinct and all obey the big werewolf, but are still individuals with their own temperamental tendencies and will... Yeah, of course you could use this. Honestly, what is this guy's... The writing in this game is astonishing. Love a big crank. Love a knife switch. Love a big, a big Frankenstein electrical doodad. Oh cool, I just turned the entire factory on? I'll tell you what this reminds me of. This really reminds me of a... Such a disappointment. I thought we could join forces against that bitch Miranda. Hold on a sec. Let me just uh, ignore you for a second while I rummage in my inventory. Okay, go on. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't... That... Ah! <laughs> I need a, a brick. There we go, that'll do. Can he hit me through here? Apparently. Oh, I might be able to stun lock him, actually. His animation, when he starts to hit, he, he reveals his heart. Well, these are zero percent threatening now. So I need power. I need enough power to destroy her. And so the medium of, you know, the form of the power are the fruits of my power. The strong will destroy the weak. That's the way of the world. Okay, but I'm. You have never refused me, Ethan. I'm not having trouble destroying them, but I'm just some dipshit with a shotgun. <laughs> Like, are you really sure that your incredible witch queen that you've decided to battle against isn't going to have more difficulty about than me? Like, there's a fundamental difficulty in, like, it's it's kind of a, it's present in a lot of games, this sort of, that one didn't even see me, this ludonarrative dissonance where people treat you like you're trash when you have completely established that you will destroy everything they have without much difficulty. Why Why do these people not see me as a threat yet? He's like a himbo, but not, not... Hey, go stand next to that for me. Thanks. Get wrecked. Fucking two bit Frankensteins.
Heisenberg is, is like a himbo if, if a himbo was evil. Oh hey, I recognize these from the previous game. These are, the, these are reused assets from the previous game, these cabinets. That's a nice little time saver for the uh, development team. If I stop, there was a spare one. I didn't even. Okay, these things are these things are complete garbage. Why does he think that this is going to work for him? He already has magneto powers. He's he's already better than an army of 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 robo men. Yeah, see, that's a good point as well. The adaptability of the human hand and its capacity to mount a variety of weapons is one of the major advantages of the human hand over, say, naturally occurring drill men. Because, um, you know, Homo, Homo penetratus is, of course, the, the little known offshoot that um, died out about 25,000 years ago. Oh, fuck. The teeniest, tiniest uh, jump scare there. These... Ow, fuck. <laughs> I got caught on a tiny piece of scenery. Part of the problem with the lack of sense of stakes in this game is that, like, you really... I don't know how much I should be worried for Ethan. Like, I've seen him survive some real shit, therefore I don't expect myself to have any real trouble with anything. But um, yeah, as I was saying previously, like, yeah, the, the issue with the lichens is that they aren't controllable. Like, what those notes we found told us was that this was basically trying to find out a way to implant stuff in someone's brain that would make them controllable in a way that the lichens were not controllable. Because they're all like pack instinct, but they're still like feral humans doing feral human things. Oh, I was supposed to lead that guy around into that one and then, and then kill him with the, the lightning again. Okay, I guess I'm just too good at this. I'm just too destructive. Ethan Winters, the world's most incredibly destructive man. His ability to smash what a clearly electrical fuse is with his like with a knife held in his hand is interesting to me. I'm going to take this as more evidence that he does not have like physical meat hands. I think he definitely has the uh, prosthetics we predicted previously. Did I get all three of them? Oh, that one survived. Didn't even break his hat. Is it literally just this one guy? I gotta say, for all that I trash this game, I am still super enjoying it. All the way through, I have been having a fantastic time with this game. I have been really enjoying playing it, and um... Hmm. I had a thought, but then it went away, and now I don't know what it was. But I have been fun having a fantastic time with this, and I, I, even though the combat mechanics are super basic, and there's no real reactions from the things you hit, or any kind of real strategy to have, just the kind of basic point-and-click rail shooter challenge of um, shooting the red orbs is, is, is actually really fun. Surprisingly. Is this the room I was in previously? No. That's a fuse box, if I've ever seen one. Well, yeah, like, that actually brings me back to what I was saying previously about the sense of stakes in a film are delivered through the players, through the, through the actors' reactions to things. Um, and this is one of the major differences between, like, filmmaking styles of the 80s and 90s and filmmaking styles of now, is now there's no reactions, there's no emotional uh, results on, in, on any of the people of any of the things that they're doing, it's just quip, quip, quip thing happens, undermine the thing that happens with some kind of clever joke, and then there's no real kind of development or, or progress or any kind of understanding of how these people feel about what's happened to them and happened around them. And it's exactly the same with games, like you need to understand the stakes of what is happening, the physical stakes of what is happening. Um, Ethan screams and stuff and reacts, but then he doesn't, he's not harmed in any way, he just continues walking just fine, like, he's not staggering even. Um, so there is no real underst like there is no real basis for the stakes. I've seen him go through some absolute just ridiculous bullshit and he has been fine every time. Therefore, I have oh two drills and no weak point. Interesting. 
That's an escalation if ever I heard one. Hey, uh, could you help me out with something? Cool. Cool. You know, you, you know you've got those big fancy drill hands. I've, uh... Oh, that's actually inconvenient. Uh, if I stand on the other side of that, can I get him to break through it? Hey, buddy. I'm over here. Cool, thanks. Oh, it's on his back this time. Which I guess means I need to rodeo him. Or oh, can I just throw a bomb behind him? Will that work? Don't move. That worked a little bit. So I guess this is the equivalent to the uh, Resident Evil 4 um, double, like, laser, like, like, stabby hand guys. Not laser hands, what am I talking about? Okay, I'm going to guess that that recharges after a minute and then I'm just going to have to loop around a couple times. Looks like it's heating up. But yeah, um, by this point we all know the drill. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yowza. One downside to fighting these guys is they do have more reach than I do. I should be chasing- I should be let- <laughs> I should be going in the other direction so that he has to follow me past it in such a way that I can actually shoot it. How do I do that? I want him to- I want to come from the other side of here. He's honestly less freaky than like a chainsaw man. A chainsaw man being like, rrr, 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 it's basically the same. Okay, now I sprint around the back. Oh, okay, that's blocked. Can I get him to break that maybe? Or can I, can I hit him on the back from here? Yeah. Oh, is that it? I guess that uh, pipe bomb mostly did for him. He's not making- he's testing the soldiers by having them fight the werewolves. He's, he, like, he knows the werewolves are effective in combat, so he's testing the werewolves by making- He's testing the soldiers by making them fight the werewolves. But um, as we all know from any kind of algorithm training in the modern day, that's only going to result in soldiers that know how to fight werewolves. If he creates soldiers that are effective against fighting werewolves, he has not created soldiers that are effective against fighting immortal witch women. So really, who's the dipshit here? I think it might still be Heisenberg. Were we in here before? Was this a room I've been through? Feels like it must be. This was locked before. Let's just look at him go. If he's got this many, why doesn't he just flood the area with me? I can't, you know, lead them around and shoot them carefully in the back if they're... Um, if there are like five of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like... His, he's, he's trying to create an army in order to fight an immortal witch. And here I am, some asshole with some, you know, American-made firearms. Except some of them def- in fact, most of them definitely aren't American-made. The Scorpion's not an American firearm. The Lemmy wasn't. Uh, Magnum definitely was, though. Hey, could you stand next to this thing? Thanks. And don't turn around real quick. I think I can damage him from the front as well. If he bends over like that, I can definitely hit him uh, across his shoulders. Which is always an option. And in fact, was an option with the the uh, the two Wolverine Claw arm dudes from Resident Evil 4, which is otherwise where these characters are from. But yeah, this is exactly what I'm saying, is the flaw in, in Heisenberg's reasoning. What's the point in having an army if one... One real American's down-to-earth everyman hero can just fucking wreck him. And why are we assuming that they're any good against a witch anyway? Like, she created him, so she's more powerful than him. So what exactly is his endgame here? These are the acts of a desperate man. This is the desperation of someone who knows there's nothing he can do. 
and yet is desperate to try and achieve something anyway. Oh shit, it's him again. <laughs> For once, Ethan and I are, in, are absolutely united in our response to something. That is not going to hold him for long. Well, apparently it is. That's just straight up stopped him. We actually know nothing about the the witch person except that she created all four of these like different lords that we are fighting. And the game uses the terminology lords. Which I am certain is because of the popularity of Dark Souls. Just straight up, I'm sure that they have chosen to call these entities the Four Lords because everybody loves Dark Souls so much. And one of the flaws with the game industry as a rule is that if there is a, if there is a thing that is popular, everything else apes it. Because uh, the money... Oh, love to see the three-arm three -arm trick again. Um... If there is one thing that large capitalist... Patronage, I've expanded my services. Well, it's not just that the four horses, the four houses serve her. The four houses actually, like, were created by her. The individuals were created by her, gained her power via her, etc. So I'm not really sure why people think you can fight, for example, fight against God with the power granted to you by a God. Like, that's just kind of like a flawed logic there. Ah, uh, yes. Hi, I'm afraid that I am short on money. Do you take the heads of defeated Cybermen? Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this, for all that it reminds me of uh, delightful um, French indie rock band Dionysos's uh, concept album, The Clockwork Heart, or Les Mécaniques du Coeur, which was actually really good, and I was very into during my steampunk phase, which I will admit I had as a teenager. As like a 22-year-old, actually. I'm this because of our relationship, you know. I've procured some new items for you, Mr. Winters. Not using that. Don't have that yet. Actually, wait, hang on. That's the six. Oh, okay, no, I do have the. That reduces the recoil to my handgun. That's a red dot sight for a shotgun. Does he actually have anything else I want? But yeah, he's absolutely kind of, uh... He clearly considers us have more than just a working relationship at this point. Oh, I do want to buy the healing juice. And... Out of obligation, I buy the upgraded bag every time I find one available, even though... I don't actually... feel like I need it that much. Huh, can I afford none of these upgrades? Can I afford any of these upgrades? The answer is no. Nothing else to sell. So basically all I got out of that was some ammunition. Have a wonderful adventure. And a merry Dark Souls to you too. He is the he's not the only friend, he is the only currently living friend. There were a few human NPCs who died foolishly. And seemingly willingly in one case. So we're going to take a really short break of like two or three minutes while I reboot the game because I need to do this every roughly half hour of gameplay time or we start getting a VRAM slowdown bug or we start getting a completely different and unrelated bug. And this this screen is definitely changing. Oh, you can't see this, but whatever. The, the main screen of the game is definitely changing as we play through different areas. Um... But yeah, so periodically I need to reboot the game and I'm also going to take advantage of this to get some more water.
So we should be back, we should be good, we should be all set for the next half hour to 45 minutes. And this was what I was mentioning, as you can see, the main screen of the game, the title screen, has been updating with different plot events. We've gone from morning to midday to evening and now to night and also on fire, which is like, like night plus, I think, really. I heard some people say that this was a scary part of the game, but I can't imagine that they were being serious. It really just isn't. Um, key part to horror in games, and especially in games like this one, which so heavily is riffing, or at least the previous game was incredibly heavily riff riffing on the sort of hunter horror genre where you are hunted. Um, but this one is making a mistake I have seen other games make, where you are capable of fighting Got a back. Long way to go. Um, the answer to that riddle is not just man, but a fucked up kind of a man. Some kind of, quote, creepy guy, unquote. Or possibly just Frankenstein's monster itself. As we all know, fire bad. But we are marching onwards to victory, as always, and that is prob kind of the problem, like... Maybe this is just like a theme park. There are horror- there are like horror-themed events and attractions and so on, and there are theme parks, and there are horror-themed zones in theme parks. What if this is just what that is? That's a- that's literally a ferris wheel. You know, you change the theming of this and this is just- this is a, a suspension ride and this is a ferris wheel. This is a really normal theme park. Remember to reload? She doesn't care for us. No. She's long lost all her humanity. I must destroy her. I don't give a shit about your family drama. <laughs> Ethan, be more understanding. You're so rude. It's a guy. This one does not seem particularly concerned with me. Oh, I take it back. Yes, he is. Now hold still so I can break your face. There we go. Ethan somehow takes all of this remarkably in stride, but is also sort of dismissive about the entire thing. He's just kind of like, I don't understand why you guys are being such assholes to me. Oh, that one didn't break. All of the efforts by which they attempt to increase your fear and your tension, all of them fail because why is there- why the hell was there a herb growing in this mine shaft? Are the zombies growing secret dank weed? I mean, sure, he's like, but the attempt to build some kind of suspense is undermined by his completely deadpan reactions to everything. He responds like someone is being inconvenient to him in the line at a Denny's, like... Oh, you made me drop my egg sandwich, god damn it. It's just, it's exactly the same. I feel like I've gotten into a good rhythm with these ones. Any more heads to pop? Just the one. Hey, could you? Thanks. I feel like I'm playing, um... I feel like I'm playing Fallout New Vegas or something. Where I used to designate a, a companion as my gun caddy to just hand me things. Like, ah, I see, robots up ahead. Uh, I'll take the number seven railgun, please. And that's a lovely, a lovely swing there. Perfect technique. Oh, we're going to crawl through another hole. We're going to crawl through another hole. Interesting. Nice reference. Uh, actually, that reminds me, another one of the, the kind of the flaws is that they attempt to build this sense of tension in Castle Dimitrescu uh, in a much more effective way. Like, it's not ultimately scary in that zone because of all the other ways in which they fail at it. However, um, the huge number of scripted sequences in Castle Dimitrescu results in a much stronger sense of these people as characters, which is why Alcina and her daughters are more interesting as characters, 
and a more, uh, a more interesting sense of tension. We, we, we sort of have an awareness of these individuals in the space they inhabit. It's obviously flawed that they are not freely released into that space to hunt you as you, as you go around performing multiple goals, going through the same spaces, learning it as an environment. As I spoke about in previous streams, it's incredibly flawed in that way. They could, they, they could have had a real top tier game, but instead they made something much more like average and scripted. Um, but on top of all of that, in the subsequent areas, we just haven't had, it established itself as almost a kind of a, what do you call it? Uh, an interactive movie rather than a like a shooter video game or shooting segments interspersed amongst uh, well, well, well. And what happens if I shoot my shoot my way through here? Um, interspersed between these kind of incredibly scripted um, interactive movie segments, and that worked. It worked really well. Um, it built a very strong sense of place and character. And if I if it was scarier, it would have built some tension, but instead it's just like, whatever. As you say, as we walk through here, it's just got... Like, you hear that clanging in the background? That's not happening distantly. That is spanners bouncing off of this man's head. Like... I assume there's no reason not to just, just break this now. I think I can't hit that one until I get a better angle. Yeah. Maybe this guy is just carved from teak. Maybe- oh, hi! Oh, you've got jetpacks now, okay. They've got jetpacks, but they've also got weak spots on their front, so I feel like he's kind of... going backwards and forwards on his designs a little bit. These are at least vaguely more interesting. Why do they have these big antennas on their heads? That's curious. That's interesting. This is more visually interesting, this kind of old weird Borg aesthetic. I guess they also have lasers, maybe? Is it laser targeting for the drills, or is it... Yo! Uh, oh, now come on! I don't think it's entirely fair for them to flank me like that. That's the tactics I'm supposed to be using. As a human actor. I'm just gonna... Oh, actually, I should try out the Magnum. I haven't used it on these guys yet probably ruin their whole day. Assuming I actually hit the weak spot. That's all for you? Was that the one I already shot or not? Oh, they don't like it. Okay, so that looks like it's two rounds to wipe these guys out, so I should probably save it for such fraught positions. Completely out of shotgun ammunition now, which is a shame. I really like the shotgun. That was a waste of a bullet. Completely unintentional. It looks like if I go over there I should be able to shoot it. Oh, but that's blocked off as well. His odd hammer-headed designs are much more interesting than... Ah, okay, I can drop down. Maybe I was supposed to use that to try and get past them. Hmm. They're just cooler. They remind me of the old-school Borg from... Star Trek, the next generation, which is the generation after Star Trek, the first generation. This is this is entirely just a puzzle dedicated to getting me into a position where I can do this. Actually, this whole section reminds me a lot of Doom. Yeah, exactly. Like, there is no threat to any of it, both because we have seen Ethan survive everything and therefore we have no reason to ever think he's under threat ever, and the fact that we can just kill everything, which means we as the player have no reason to think we are under threat ever, um, and the fact that all of the kind of horror tone is, instead of being genuinely creepy, just kind of things we've seen a million times before. Um... Like, I don't know about you, but I have played enough boomer shooters to have, like, shotgunned Frankensteins by the by the dozen in the past, you know? Maybe on the tougher difficulty it is not like this. I haven't even needed to look at my map. I don't know if I've missed anything important, but, uh... Soldat Enhancement. Soldat Jet. 
Attached to jetpack and head stabilizers. Oh, that's what those are? That's so dumb. I assumed it was some kind of like weird, like brain tuning thing that made them smarter or maybe let them be controlled better. Or like a radio apparatus, like like for radar so they could tell understand space or whatever. But those are just stabilizer jets mounted on their heads. Okay, I take it back. I love this. This is stupid in exactly the way I love. Experiments prove limited flight capabilities. No long distance flight, but now possible to navigate rough, rugged terrain. Is this literally... He's designed them to be able to fly because they kept getting stuck on the scenery and I kept using that to kill them. Soldat Panzer. Attached aluminium alloy shielding to a soldat to protect chest reactor and exposed flesh. Experimentation proves he is invincible against regular firearms. Armor does not hold up against strong blasts. Further development needed. Is that one I is that something I've fought already? Were these guys enhanced with both of those, or are they enhanced with only only the jetpacks? It did look like they were heavily armored on the front, um but the flaw with leaving a big hole in your heavy armor is like with your weak oh, oh <sighs> they've armored the bit that isn't the weak point is what I'm getting at here. Oh, I'm super gonna die here. <laughs> Well, gee, I wonder what I have to do. Shit, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> My dude, you have come far, far closer to death. I refuse to believe that if that thing had hit you, you wouldn't have just, you know, squeezed some glue all over yourself and been fine again, as you have been every- oh, hey! Been a while since I've seen a collectible. As you have been in every single fight previously. They spend so much effort teaching us shoot the red things to progress, and then here they just point you at a red thing and say, "Oh no, what are you gonna do?" It's like a like if you ever played D and D with a really bad GM, where they're just like, "You're in a room. There is a door. Okay, what else is in the room? Nothing." Should I interact with the door then? I don't know. What else do you want to do? Well, there's a door, right? Yes. Is there anything else? No, there's just a door. Well, I open the door. Congratulations, you're in a room with a door. Oh, hey, has he got... What happened to his knuckles? Literally, that's... We haven't seen that hand be wounded in a while. Honestly, I was not subtweeting you, Icarus. Straight up. I was not getting at you with that. Honestly, if he was animated differently, like, if there were just, like, gating points throughout the game where his animations changed, I would believe that he was being wounded a lot more. If he was, like, staggering and dripping and panting and stuff a lot more, I would absolutely believe... No, I wouldn't. I would be more inclined to believe to a greater extent that he was actually being troubled by all this stuff, but... Soon, she'll start her ceremony with your rose. If that happens... It's all over. For your kid. And for the whole village. But don't worry. I'll stop it. I'll use Rose to kill Miranda. <laughs> Poor Papa. You're the only one who doesn't see your kid's power. Take Rose? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. I mean, doesn't he kind of already have Rose? I'm not entirely sure what uh, what you mean by that, Ethan. Ethan, what is your deal? Why are you like this? Oh, I have to mold something else. Okay. That was a, a rigmarole to get a hold of this. Okay, right, trade one bullet for eight bullets. A net gain of seven bullets. There are a few games that have actually done this um, kind of thing with... Let's see, I've got five and... No, I've only got five Magnum bullets. I've got... 5, 10, got 11, no wait, that one's, I've got 13-ish grenades, I should probably equip grenades. I shall set that instead, my shotgun, since I'm out of shotgun. But this is the stupidest goddamn thing. Like, there are actually games that have attempted this, there are games that have tried to sell uh, the the ongoing upfuckedness of their of their main character over the course of the game through changing the uh, way the voice actor is directed 
through changing the way that his, he is animated and written. Um, I can, can't think of many examples right now, but there are several examples in like the canon of games. The one that comes to mind is actually um, Spec Ops The Line, which... There are a lot of criticisms with that game and they are valid, they are valid criticisms. Um, there are a lot of problems with that game and it's completely fair to discuss them. But one thing that I just think it deserves credit for is that it is a retelling of Heart of Darkness. Your character is descending into a kind of like paranoiac mad world um, over the course of the game as he, you know, loses his goddamn mind in, in, in the Middle East. And this is actually reflected in his animations. This is reflected in his, his speech patterns. He starts the game being very kind of clipped and formal in kind of that kind of like tactical sort of way with, you know, Tango spotted, all of these kind of like calm interactions. And he goes by the end of the game to, in ordinary gunfights, unscriptedly just screaming, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And his takedowns go from being clinical and brutal, from clinical to being extremely brutal and violent. There is a kind of a sense of him changing as a person by his fucking madness. Welcome. And, um... It is actually pulled off quite well in that game. You do believe that your your guy is is losing his goddamn mind. He is becoming extremely fucked up as you go, and and it's it's sold through animations. It's sold through voice direction. And um, one of my one of my recurring I've some new stock. New stock, eh? Uh, it doesn't look like you've got any new stock. It looks like you've got the same stock you've been always been using. This is a this is a this is a cooking joke. Younger to be alive so there are all these ways that it can be sold and the player can be convinced of these things and they've just chosen not to the recoil on that thing is fine though i haven't actually need had issues with recoil um so there are all these ways that these things can be sold the player can be convinced of these things but I'm um skilled at all sorts of weapons modifications and we'll do them for a small fee a small fee what would be more convenient? Probably rate of fire. Leave this to me. I care less about reload speed than ammo cap, to be honest. Oh, I can't upgrade that. I'll just save up for my next upgrade. I wonder if this is a new game plus. That would be pretty cool, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, so one of my regular soapboxes that I talk about periodically when I play games is that... Um, the games industry, as a rule, handles voice acting terribly. Scripts are often decided relatively, like, inconsistently throughout the development of the game. It is not unusual for a lot of changes to be made to scripts, but um, for any recordings that have been made to not be re-recorded. So you get these kind of, like, odd reuses of lines or things that don't quite add up right. Um, now what am I looking for? There was I need to find the mold room with the the mold in it. Oh well, I ain't going that way. So, yeah. So, um, one of the other flaws is that it is generally considered that um, it is generally considered that there is no like need for direction in voice acting. You just tell them what you want to say, and they say it. But. Uh, the lack of direction is almost total. Um, gaming voice actors tend to just be given a line, and it's not even in the context of the lines preceding it. They are given like an alphabetical list of lines with no connection to whatever, like, what position it has in the narrative or even the previous line that the character is saying. Which means that you get a lot of really weird intonations in, in game dialogue. You get characters saying like, you get characters putting the stresses on the wrong words and talking about, say, things like, you know, like, I bet you never saw that coming, when it should be, I bet you, ne you never saw that coming, or whatever that is, but, like, there's tons and tons of examples of these, and I tend to, I try and point them out when I'm doing my actual Let's Plays, but it is a really consistent problem, and it is a completely avoidable problem. Games with good, games that get respect for good writing actually often just have good voice acting, and the good voice acting is good because the voice actors are correctly directed. If I wanted to get in there, I probably would have had to get the guy to smash this down, but he's dead now. Hmm. Unfortunate. What a tragedy. Unless, can I smash them down? Don't know. Can I or can I not? Well, not with that, clearly. Hey, could you... Thanks, that's actually really helpful. 
God damn it, I need to remember to switch to my actually killing stuff. There we go. Are you, are you good? Are you still there? Oh, oh, he's actually... Okay, so these guys are weak to flashbangs. That seems spectacularly stupid. Maybe that's what the visors on the, the other ones are for. It stops them being vulnerable to flashbangs. Anyway, that was definitely worth it. Well, A, these are the earlier versions that we've already killed a shitload of, and B, I mostly beat it because I hit it in the face with a flashbang, which stunned it. Uh, but the fact that they aren't immune to flashbangs, even though they are, like, Robomen, is pretty dumb. It is pretty dumb. Did I come down? I came down from up here, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I should probably look at my map, but I'm notoriously bad at map reading uh, for, like, close entangled areas, so... There's, there's another one around here, I bet, isn't there? But yeah, so basically, what I'm trying to get at is that um, good voice acting will redeem a mediocre script, and good voice acting needs to be well-directed, and it is considered a total waste of money to provide voice direction. Um, often there is no voice director whatsoever, and often voice actors are given one chance to read a line. Uh, there is no opportunity to do a second take, there is no opportunity to, like, know what your character is feeling, which is why you get a lot of mismatched tones in response to things. A character should be going... A character who should be horrified or astonished by something says something matter-of-factly. A character who should be responding in a particular way based on their context and their personality and what's happening to them will instead do nothing of the sort and just basically chill. Um, a lot of very odd line reads are simply because the... Uh, game's designer, or the game's director, or the money men, or whoever, basically just decided it's worthless. There is no point in... Did you think I was behind that? There is no point in, in wasting money on direction, or different line reads, or multiple takes, or whatever. They just... You get one try, and that's it. Um... And it's, it's a huge problem in the industry, and it's a huge personal pet peeve, and I, I point it out every time it happens. If you play a, um, if you play almost any, uh, Mass Effect game, this is no notable constantly, because those lines get recut and moved around, and the actors are, as I said before, not given, um, the context of the previous lines. They're often given an alphabetical list of lines out of context. And they, so they have to guess from the line itself where the stresses should be, and none of it ever makes any sense for obvious reasons. And this is just... it's disastrous and it makes for bad art. Um, so I'm going to climb back down off my regular soapbox. Well, that's one of my, like, three regular... Oh, okay, that's that's a juggernaut or a Jaeger or whatever the fuck... He, a panzer, that was what he called them. Um, which is weird considering the, they had a whole so Soviet thing going on, but whatever. Hey, are you immune to doors? Oh my god, he's not immune to doors? I'm just gonna open- like, I'm just gonna open this, like... Seriously? What the fuck? <laughs> I have found their weakness, and their weakness is... No thumbs. You know, you'd think they could just walk through the fucking walls when they're that tanky, but whatever. I kinda want to go back and kill it with grenades. Yeah, the, the thing is, they're not as clever in, as velociraptors, and also, Velociraptors don't have thumbs either, like... Velociraptors are apparently both clever and have more dexterous, like, manipulator appendages. Oh hey, there he is. Is that it? Okay, I've broken bits off of this guy now. His heart is definitely exposed. So, like, what does Heisenberg think this is going to achieve? Because his, like... Cool guy, armor man. I'm breaking his stuff off with bullets. Like, these are not even- this is, like, civilian available weaponry. It's not even, like, spec ops bullshit, like... Perfect mechanical heart. <gasps> Soon I will be a real boy! 
Oh no, those weren't flashbangs. I switched to incendiaries and what happened was that I blew the armor off of it and um, then when it ran in here, I shot him with another incendiary and the damage AOE triggered this. Um, which we have been using to stun them periodically all the way through the factory zone. So it wasn't actually the flashbang that took it down, it was it was that. Uh, but it might as well have been a flashbang. Alright, have fun with your friends. I will be continuing to kill an absolute shitload of pointless robo men. This is the door you came through. That's I need to go the other. Oh, I hear drama noises. Oh, there's another one! Oh, there were just straight up two of them. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so they can do doors. That's good to know. These ones are kind of adorable. Haha! -ha. Hey, come... We're not done! Come the fuck back! Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hoisted by my own petard. Uh, I have... I have seen the face of hubris and it is, it is named Ethan Winters. Okay, so he actually can't come through into this space. That's what's actually the issue here. It looks like he can't actually come through the door. Oh, okay. Yes, he can. No, he... Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Okay, so his, his pathfinding is locked to that room. Like, literally, he can't come through into here. Every time he comes more than a couple of steps into the room, he turns around and goes back again. Something about this area and the and Heisenberg's aesthetic is reminding me of my steampunk phase when I was a when I was very into things like Amanda Palmer and uh, cool cogs on my hat. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. He's just like, come fight me over here where it's fair. Come, come on, come back through the door. You, I'm not allowed. Heisenberg says no. Heisenberg says no wolfman on the furniture, and that's what I used to be. But you know Heisenberg is absolutely sitting on the sofa whenever he, whenever like no one's looking. Like, oh, this is blocked off. Okay. Whenever whenever Mother Miranda is out of out of town, Heisenberg is just climbing up on the sofa and and shedding. Yeah, everyone is crystal, um, I don't know if Rose is crystal, but apparently she's crystal or something, like, uh, the bosses turn into, like, chalk and, and disintegrate when they die, and this is, um, basically referential back to the previous game, where the, uh, the mold stuff, uh, when it died it would, quote, calcify, unquote, and turn into like white stone that would then break apart into into chalky dust. <laughs> the thing about Heisenberg is that I do think he's he's vaguely attractive in this kind of like scruffy man way. Like, um, for the kind of people who like rough trade, he is he is that kind of man, you know. Or at least no, that's what he. I think he looks like he wants that to be the to be who he is. Like that's he's intentionally culti cultivating that appearance, but he can't quite actually pull it off. Where the fuck am I supposed to be going? All these rooms look the same. Well, I have a map. Okay, so it looks like to my left is the pathway back to the thing, which is up here. Did I just miss this? Yeah, exactly. But like, I feel like, like being sweaty and dirty is part of the attract attraction for a lot of people to that archetype. There is a kind of like a big, big sweaty like man who works with his hands, you know, like a a machinist or whatever. Naturally. See, he agrees. Oh, he and he and Heisenberg must be the only gay men in this entire village, like. They probably hooked up for a while just because, you know, they're the only gay men here. Like, what else are they supposed to do? Did I sell the wrong thing? I'm not sure. Oh no, there were just two of these. This should be enough. I'm skilled at all sorts of weapons modifications and will do them for a small fee. 
I'll uh, I'll modify your weapon if you like, Ethan. Wink, wink. Have you have you managed to overcome your fear of your attraction to men yet? No. Okay. Well, I'll be here later. Um. Rate of fire. Definitely want to upgrade that. I think I'll skip the other two. Nice. No reason not to upgrade the magnum as well. It does kill the shit out of things. It's fine. All finished. Uh, there really isn't anything else I need except ammunition right now. Please come again. Maybe later. I think they just like broke up because they realized they were incompatible, and that's the fundamental tragedy of being gay and dating in a small town. Anyway, uh, it's going to be time for the next little break. So two minutes, and we will be right back into the game. And we're back. Honestly, I kind of also have had enough of Heisenberg as well. Genuinely, I am not joking when I say that if Castle Dimitrescu had been four times the size and had had you actually backtracking through the same areas multiple times or had set you loose and said go find four things and let you explore at your own pace rather than having this frustrating... Uh, constant back and forth where you you are just led by the nose between locations then i genuinely think it would have been a like you could have sold me the whole game as just that and i would have been happy like um is that a giant head i think it's a pipe section but like i talked about this on previous streams but like as a design that would have been fine like if they had more heavily taken inspiration from the uh, both the previous resi. I understand why they needed to tone down the scariness, but they already did that, honestly, because vampires just aren't as scary as a fucked up guy who is like your abusive dad. And the Dimitres Dimitrescu's family is just, they're all such interesting, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, they're not interesting, they're extremely, like, generic, really but they're still fun characters. But I'm tired of chit-chat. Tired. Hold on a sec, let me just read this. Prototype, Storm, using a cheap turboprop engine, but he's impossible to control. All he does is charge, too much power from the reactor, completely invincible head-on, but the dumbass managed to chop his own damn arms off on the propeller. Also, issues with overheating from running from long periods of time. Conclusion, a complete failure. There's a weird energy to this. You can hear it, can't you? Something waiting for you. There's the energy of, like... This guy clearly thinks he's the business, like... Eisenberg thinks his whole deal is that he's- Oh my god, he's Elon Musk! He's so invested in being the smart science man. And then he's just actually like a goddamn idiot. That's what it- that's what it is! That's- Like, he's- he's so invested in being the clever smart guy and he's just- bad at everything and causing problems for everyone. Like... Bye! I don't have time for this bullshit! Out of my way! 
Yeah, no shit, neither do I. But what am I gonna do about it? Ow. Did he walk over me? Is he... Oh, he's stuck it. Okay, so this is gonna be the traditional video game boss fight that you get on everybody who has a big glowing weak spot on their back. Where you bait him into running into a wall. Hey, can you charge at me real quick? And then dive out of the way. And he gets himself stuck. And then you repeat for about three times. And then, and then he'll die. He'll be dead. Or maybe I should get him to smash a hole in something. Oh, I haven't recharged this. Whoops. Recharge is not the word. What do you call it with a shot? Uh... Oh, I've run out. How have I run out? I thought I had an absolute shitload. Yeah, hold on a sec. Uh, hmm. Flashbang. The fuck happened to the rest of my grenades? Did I really use them all up? Well, okay. I guess it's time to... Uh, reset my shortcuts. Whatever. Hey, run at me real fast, yeah? Ouch. Well, <laughs> I guess I kind of brought that on myself, huh? He has the energy of, like, a train man. And yet, he is clearly a plane man. Is he going to explode? I guess that's a bit like exploding. Wait, hang on, what the fuck? This makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. Why is he... Why is he setting things on fire now? That is not the, uh, that is not the appropriate behaviour of a guy who is a plane. Have you met plane propellers? They don't do this. Is this some kind of, like, World War II thing I don't know about, since he's clearly such a... Like, that is a World War II engine! Like, I love a, I love a classic prop-driven plane design, but... He's even making train noises, I think. He sounds, he sounds like uh, the classic American, like, foo-foo noise. Can't be much more of him left, surely. This robot is trained to fuck you up. Ouch. Okay, so he can turn around pretty dangerously, that's good to know. It'd be really embarrassing if I died to this one. Oh fuck, that might actually happen. Are there any green herbs around? No, I'm down, so. I think this is the only time I've ever died in combat. I feel like you guys are referencing that terrible anime that had- You really are a tough one. Uh, blah. I'm tired of chit chat. Time to die. You can hear it, can't you? Someone waiting for you. I, uh, I might go back and save right back at the thing, just so that I don't have to fuck about with, uh, going back through here every time. If I'm allowed to. I bet I'm not allowed to. They, it would be very, uh, nope, okay, it's fine. Wait, what was the Blade Runner reference? Oh, of course. I feel like that phrase is used so often that it's no longer like a reference to Blade Runner. It's just, it's just a thing people say, because nobody ever says it in the context of the guy who's the way what the guy who says it in Blade Runner says it about. Like, you know, he's he's representing his own submission to mortality, where his, the whole theme of him as a character is his desire to escape the mortality that has been inflicted upon him by an uncaring. Uh, Array of masters. 
like in context, it is not said by something by someone who is trying to kill someone. It is said by someone who has accepted his own death. And it's been adopted as such a villain line. It's 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 really irritating to me that people people kind of completely destroy the thematic bases of the things they're saying. So I guess I'm kind of forced to get run over by him at least once. No, no, we're actually we're okay. I feel like he gets stunned for less time later on. The more he is able to... Oh, okay, so he can't break that. You good, buddy? Alright. How many games now have a, a spin to win? That's the real question. Oh, I'm stuck. And it's fine. He definitely, definitely gets faster um, later on. How close into his animation does he get stuck into actually charging at something? That's what I need to know. Like, at what point can I dodge? Okay, it looks like pretty early in his animation he gets locked into charging. This is going much better. I think I might need him to smash some of this stuff to find secret treasure. Ouch! Did he turn? Did he turn? I didn't think he was allowed to turn. Oh, that's gonna be fire again, isn't it? Well, this is inconvenient for me personally. Ow! I wasn't. That wasn't even close. Maybe I should- if I'm only gonna get a couple shots in, maybe I should switch back to the Magnum again. That's gonna be fire. Landmine? Maybe landmines will be effective against him. Oh, he can't break that. Oh, yes he can. I'm finding the iconography of what he can and can't break very mysterious. Could you- could you run at me instead of breathing fire? Thank you. So I guess being on fire is just a phase that activates for a little while. After which I might as well devote myself to dodging because he doesn't, like he turns around too fast. Ouch, oh he winged me that time. Get it, because he's a plane. <laughs> Well, I'm not too damaged, that's the important thing. That's gonna be fire. This is so spectacularly dumb that I can't even, like, hate him. Although this is way too long for a boss of this style, having fought many bosses of this style in many video games. like it's turbines for you. No, that's nothing. I'm really running out of ammunition. Actually, maybe I should just... If I can only really hit him when he when he's, when he's in non-on-fire mode, then I should just wait. Oh, he definitely winged me that time. I already used that one. Where the hell is he going? Yowza. How much more is he going to take? Like, I think I've knocked down every wall now. There's just him. In a big empty room. It would be amazing if they specifically tuned the difficulty... Well, I say difficulty. The amount of hits he needed in this fight to... Literally just, like, how much ammo do you have? How much ammo do we want you to have going into the next zone?
Where's the least convenient place for him to do that? <laughs> Look, I baited him as a completely wasting it. He only set his own feet on fire. I definitely meant to do that on purpose. I think I ran through that fast enough that it didn't hurt me. Maybe that's not his weak point and I've just been lied to by iconography. Oh, he's, he's only got three propellers left. Have I been breaking his propellers off? I'm disappointed that he didn't say like, oh fuck, I had a really good one. I had a really good pun for this. What was it? Uh... D d d d d no, nothing. I've got nothing. Literally, I'm completely blanking on what my cool pun was. I had like five plain puns and I didn't get to use them. They were all appropriate to him dying. I could have done, I could have done the whole air hostess thing and been like, please return your tables to other upright position and then he explodes. That would have been cool. That would have been an option. Miranda is abominable. Her deceit knows no bound. We are merely a bunch of failed cadeau experiments to her. I was just lucky I had more affinity to the stuff than some other poor schmucks in the village. So she still calls me her son. What a joke. I'll never forgive her for what she did to me. That crazy bitch has never been right in the head. She can't see the difference between experiment and family. Miranda didn't just change my body. She took my dignity. If I don't kill her, then my life will never be my own. Still, she might be crazy, but she's powerful. She can turn into anyone using the Mega My Seat. The trick is that brat, Rose. If I could access her power, then maybe. Speaking of, the kid's dad, Ethan, has a pretty interesting body himself. Maybe I could get... Okay, this is not even subtle at this point. This, there is not even a question in my mind anymore. This guy is into Ethan. Like, this guy absolutely represents Ethan's, like, latent homosexual tendencies and his fear of discovering that about himself. Ethan, you have a pretty interesting body or butter that I love to get a closer look at out from under my cool hat like I guarantee fucking tea it secret tunnel secret tunnel interesting this one is just ordinary crouching it doesn't have that like scripted sneaky sneaky anything else in here many things fantastic that was a waste. Did not mean to do that. Oh, hey. Hello. I hope you, uh... I remember exactly who you are. Uh, I hope you have a fun time watching my stream. I know it sound. <laughs> I super made it sound like I don't remember who you are, but I do remember who you are, so don't worry. Everyone really just wants to fuck a greasy werewolf. Like, I feel like if you don't try it at least once, how will you know you don't like it? This fe this feels like I was supposed to fight a boss here. This super feels like a little arena for a mini boss fight. Like, you know how if you play enough games you start to just see the, the code, you know? You start to spot the shapes of things before they happen. Actually, this brings me to a point that is like I have brought up previously that Ethan Ethan's behavior is incomprehensible he just does stuff there is no reason in any like logical world for him to crawl out on here there is no reason to think that this will help him in any way there is no reason to even like suspect that this is the best way to get to the next floor because this is a video game and there is only one way for us to progress, we have to take that path, even though it makes no logical sense that it would occur to the character to try and do that. We're fucking greasy werewolves because greasy werewolves need to have their stinky little holes punished, and I super regret saying that. Wow. Um, I recognise this room. This is near the exit. This is right back where we started. But uh, the fourth of the four's, four main bosses in the game is... A, a stinky, greasy cowboy werewolf man. What the? <laughs> I'm getting some very mixed messages from from chat about response to this. 
Like, I feel like this is pretty much the same reaction other people had when I committed to... Oh, it's... it's... But I've got a rebellion too. So stay out of my way. Ethan, don't waste my bullets, and also where did you get that gun? I sold it previously. He waited an uncomfortable amount of time between saying don't come and saying back. He literally entombed me and moved me around earlier in the game without it being an issue for me, so like... Maybe he's, he's considered that he's tried that and it didn't work, or maybe he just hasn't occurred to him to put me underground. But yeah, I feel like this is this is the second example of what we saw previously in stream number... Again. Ethan's frustration at being forced to go through the same areas over and over again, I feel like the develop... There's a mistake developers often make where they make you do something irritating and frustrating and then they say, haha, isn't this irritating and frustrating? As if joking about it redeems it, but it doesn't actually. You haven't made a satire of a bad mechanic, you have just included that bad mechanic in your game. But it is amusing to me to see that this game, like so many others, the protagonist has a cutscene gun. Obviously it's really difficult and frustrating to try and, um, like animate every gun in the game that someone might be using at any given time. So you just designate one of their guns as the cutscene gun. Oh, hey! I told you to leave it alone, Ethan. Chris, I haven't seen you in ages. How are you? Away. What do you care, Chris? You killed my wife, you son of a bitch! You think I killed Mia? That wasn't her. It was Miranda. What? She's a bot. Oh, fuck yeah! She changed her appearance and pretended to be Mia. Seems she also survived being shot, so now I'm here to finish the job. This oh, is the shit. most insane shit I've ever Don't heard. You fucking tell me right away, because I knew you would want to be involved. And this job is hard enough without civilians getting in the way. Why us, Chris? Chris, you're being homophobic. What the hell is going on? All right. I guess I owe you an explanation. Please, please, I'm dying to know what the fuck is going on. Give me that wrench. I swear to God, I thought he was going to turn around and Chris would be gone. Was that it? Where's my explanation? Oh. Long story short, Miranda's fucking insane. In this yeah. village, all these monsters and freaks, this is her life's work. Some sort of crazy experiment with the mold. He became a Metal Gear character at the end of the previous what game. Louisiana. God damn it. All this time, I thought I could save my family. I can't escape from here. I can't do anything. That might not be true. You know what that is? That is a Warhammer 40,000 model. That is absolutely this. what that is. My men sent those pictures a few minutes ago. Miranda. Keep looking. Rose. Holy shit, we gotta go! Relax, my men are monitoring the situation. But they have my daughter. You don't get anything. You don't stand a chance against Miranda by yourself. You need me, Chris, the widest man in North America. I will stay down here and finish planting explosives. You take that elevator, I'll meet you topside. I promise you, we will get your daughter back. Together. Damn straight we will. And when I find Miranda, she's a dead woman. Mr. X is no longer a man, though. He is a tyrant. All right, Ethan. Then you take this and do me a favor. Try to stay under the radar. Sometimes a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. What a man's gotta do is homoerotic tank battle. Actually, in terms of filtering masculine sexuality through the lens of 1980s action movies, homoerotic tank battle is extremely on brand. But um, yeah, no, so as I was talking about a couple streams ago, I had this whole 
uh, thing about the difference between the functionally grounded fantasy of, um, well, science fiction, I guess, of the Resident Evil, like, setting, where ultimately things have physical causes. You can't do outright magic. You can make giant mutants, but you making you make them from biomass, you know. Magic biomass comes from nowhere, fine, but it's, it's within the, like, filmic parameters of a science fiction horror movie that mutants can just become, like, big freaky monster guys. Um... But there is never, like, outright actual magic magic. We seem to have that over here, without much issue. To Hound Wolf Squad. The sweep of the factory is complete. No proof of connection with the organization. I guess this just was not our lucky day. I did manage to get my hands on a number of documents disclosing some of Miranda's experiments, which support our previous theories. She seems to have infected herself with the mutamycete, which has granted her a number of abilities. No shit, really? Including mimicry. She can control her cells and transform herself to look like anyone or anything. She disguised herself as Mia and infiltrated the Winters' home. Her objective was to kidnap Rose. Maybe she thought she could control Rose easier if she looked like her mom. When we attacked, it put a little damper on her plans, so she mimicked a corpse. Then she revived herself in the transport truck, killed everyone on board, and took off with Rose. Things did not go the way she originally planned, but in the end, she still got what she wanted. Until now. It's time to rendezvous and blow this place sky high. This might turn into a fight with Heisenberg, but I think I found something useful. He left one of his little toys laying around, and it's even made from a metal polymer composite, which he can't control. Time to turn the tables. Yeah, where the fuck did the baby come from? So, like, has, has Miranda been pretending to be Mia for three goddamn years? At which point, I think it's arguable that Ethan did not, in fact, have a relationship with Mia, but just had a relationship with Miranda. Um, is this... Uh, I mean, extremely dubious sexual ethics aside, like, is this straight up... I'm not climbing on that yet, I need to reset the game. Well, yeah, but her ne his wife in the previous game, who it's implied he had been married to for several years, did not have superpowers before she got lost in the swamp and turned into a mold monster. So it's presumably the case that he did have a wife named Mia previously. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back. I just need to reset the game real quick. As I have established previously, this is necessary due to bugs. Well, the previous game is basically about... No, she got superpowers by being infected by the mold. She worked for a different secret organization, which also manufactured, like... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking must be the case. She Mia died in the swamp. At the end of the previous game, Mia is kind of, like, consumed by the swamp monster, and she, she does so in such a way to set... Uh, Ethan free so that he can go and uh, save himself. Uh, she basically sacrifices herself for him to be rescued um, so that he can go fight the final boss fight and, and save the day. So presumably uh, after that point the Mia that he meets during the next three years is, is not Mia and that that's the point where that change happens but he did have a wife named Mia who worked for a uh, a, an illegal corporation called The Connections, which um, was involved in the illegal trade in mutagenic bioweapons. The trade in mutagenic bioweapons being basically the fundamental plot basis of all of the Resident Evil games. And um, we're back, by the way. Uh, yes, Mia lied to Ethan and was in fact a bioterrorist. At the end of the game, Mia sacrifices herself to free Ethan and then Ethan goes and fights the final boss and we do not see Mia after that point. At the start of this game, Ethan is just like, it's been three years and I've been with Mia and we have a baby and things are great now. And I'm being trained to be a paramilitary guy by my good friend Chris, the whitest man in North America. And then, um... Then this game ensues. So that is, that is the potted history of Ethan Winters. Metal polymer composite, huh? Time to fight fire with fire. Time to fight fire with a recoilless rifle and a chainsaw the size of two men. I'm coming, Rose. This is this is full on a vehicle mode. That's nice. What is that? It's a 50 cal. A lot of recoil on this recoilless cannon, I gotta say. Um And you apparently the chainsaw is for blocking. How do I can I not attack with the 
Nope, apparently not. I cannot attack with my chainsaw, even though I really want to. This is great. This is a this is fantastic. I am delighted. To defeat the Robo Man, you must become the Robo Man. Ethan Winters, biomechanical warlord. Those look super, super smashable. Oh well. Oh, absolutely. I really want to know if the chainsaw will do. Also, who the fuck trained him to use this thing? He feels like it feels like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, sure. Let's let's do this in an enclosed space. That's not gonna destroy my hearing or my eyes. You're like a goddamn cockroach. Homoerotic tank battle begins. I gotta say, this is the best boss fight in any Resident Evil game. 100% I am here for this. This is a fucking delight. I'm not entirely sure how to block stuff though, or heal, or whatever. I don't think there's any reason not to just hold the block button at all times. Oh, I broke his leg. <laughs> Is Steel Glory what he's named his dick? You know, for an extremely gay man, he seems to have a lot of mommy issues. Is that common? Does he have any- oh, hang on. This is literally- this is one of the bosses from the previous game. This is the, when you fight uh, the dad in the swamp when he's a big tentacle monster. He has these, like, weak spots all over him that you have to hit. Is there a weak spot here? It's just his face. Oh no, my tank is on its side. This seems like a problem. <laughs> it sure is good I broke your legs, huh? My tank! The symbolic representation of my penis in this thematic battle. This is fantastic. I'm genuinely, I love this. Oh, this game is wonderful. This is a delight. Wait, where's your weak spot? Like, is it just his face? You are flesh and blood. I can. Your weak spot is flesh and blood. Ethan sure is just taking all of this shit talking in stride. Is that? Okay, so it is his face. He's got a brain in there somewhere. Somehow. Is that all for you? Are we done, my good chum? Nope. Is he actually running away from me? Also, if he's controlling all of this stuff telekinetically with his mind, why is it an issue that I break his metal bits? Oh, 
<laughs> you really should have taken my deal. My tank. <laughs> I feel like beating me to death with the tank is a tactical error on his part. Oh hey, I solved that puzzle already. His desi design is basically identical to any Resident Evil boss design, except that he's metal instead of flesh. <laughs> Crystal Heisenberg. I think I met her once. This was de this was delightful. I'm in love with this. I heard explosions. What the hell happened? I dealt with Heisenberg. Now I'm gonna find Miranda and get Rose back. Not without me. It's too dangerous. Wait there, you hear me? Ethan? Rose? Ethan! Ethan, respond! Gotta remember what happened last time we had a freaky baby. Mia? Our child. She's so important, isn't she? She's everything to me. <laughs> and mine to me. With Heisenberg, that doesn't make sense. You've lost your lead. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm saving Rose. You'd never know, do you? Even when I took Mia's place in your home. Poor Ethan. Who are you? Where's Rose? <laughs> Rita. Enough. Remember Evelyn and her power over them all? Rose is her successor. No. Rose is Evelyn's true, complete form. She will grow to fully control the masses. And I must have her. Fuck you, you crazy bitch! <laughs> A star action movie protagonist dialogue. Calm yourself. Rose will be safe. The Mega My Seat catalogs all of us. However, she will be reborn as my daughter. She's my child, not yours. Where are you? Show yourself. She Why seems like she's crowing out, out a bit. Was it because of her parents? And you are truly a special case. But I've learned all I can. From your worth as a lab rat has run out. Miranda, you coward. Come on and face me. This has not been a problem previously. Your death will come quick. You will join the Mega My Seeds records. Did, is that my heart? I will make sure to sample your blood for data. Once dawn breaks, the ceremony will be complete, and I will become her true mother! M Miranda, I need that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure death is faster when your heart is torn out than, than this. I've got to say, this is a pretty heartless way to kill him. The dreams really can come true. You must be feeling brokenhearted. I can't wait to see my true child again. I imagine Chris is going to install some kind of bionic heart like Iron Man. I mean, yeah, literally, that's what that's what's going to happen, isn't it? This is like the ending of Bioshock. Captain, I've confirmed the death of Ethan Winters. Although I just get to play as... To the body. Wait, is this the end of the game? Share your screen, and I'll go over the situation. My team and I were careless. Yesterday, we took down the transformed Miranda, but we didn't kill her. Oh, what? Who knew she could fake being a corpse? It's pretty easy to fake being Since a corpse. Miranda we can do it all the time. Infected Ethan. I forcefully took him and Rose with us. 
but the vehicle they were riding in was attacked. Yeah, I completely agree. I would really respect the game when if it was just like, yeah, you just die and that's it, it's over. And Rose were gone. The last time I was able to contact Ethan, I heard Miranda's voice. She murdered him. And she is not gonna get away with it. Oh shit, do I really get to play as Chris for the rest of the game? Oh, I'm so happy. God damn it, when does it end? Yeah, good question. When does this game end? Because I'm losing my shit. All of it. Three years trying to put this thing in the ground. Three years too long. Heisenberg was an easier boss fight than the Propeller Man. Yeah, it's like the blunt that got um, Justin Bieber thrown out of a nightclub. So BSAA got here already. They didn't waste any time. Mission adjustment? No, doesn't change anything. Terminate Miranda and rescue Rose. That's the mission. And failure's not an option. Let's have some fun, people. Like old times. Move out. Roger. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, I want to know what the hell BSAA is doing here. Find out what you can. Roger that. I'm on it. Been a while since we fought. Oh my god, this is amazing. When was the last? The desert? Doing nothing but recon's gotten me out of shape. But thanks to your recon, we know Miranda's plan. Couldn't quite believe it when I heard she turned herself into Mia, though. Taking five shots to the head's nothing to sneeze at either. Spooky. Ah, oh, naturally, there is always there is always an East London member of every single Spec Ops team in all of the Western canon of visual media. There's always got to be some guy talking like he's from S Street in it. This is delightful, though. Just if they're committing to this, I'm genuinely really pleased with that because first off, it is dumb that he could survive everything else, but then only his heart being torn out kills him. But also, just like committing to killing your protagonist as a third act pro plot twist and playing as someone else for the rest of the game is that's great. Nobody does that. Yes, hey, hey. Going too far. Oh yeah, no, I believe this is physical again. Now I don't believe that this is a, a journey to the center of the mind. This is apparently real. First, we're gonna have to take that thing out. You got your back, boss. Let's get to work. <laughs> The thing is, Everyone like, watch for hostile bio weapons. Roger. How much? Oh, hello. Oh, look at this. I've got a karambit. I've got hand gr actual hand grenades instead of pipe bombs. A laser target. I better kill the boss with this at the end. That's going to be what that is for. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. I don't have any magic healing juice though. No key items. No treasure. I never did. We'll find out some of the, find out what some of that treasure was for. But so the um. There is a kind of with a group of hostile bio weapons. There's more than we thought. Watch out. There is a kind of a um like a a fictional milieu which there is a lot of me media in which is this kind of like hypertech like um cyber thriller. And the two most prominent franchises in that in my opinion in games are Obviously, Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear series, but also um, the Resident Evil series. And it's interesting to me that Resident Evil was always the more grounded of the two. Resident Evil had lots of silly, you know, 1980s action movie cliches going on. But it did have this, this groundedness. It did have this idea that it was existing primarily in the context of, you know, it's grounded in science ideas. Get cocky. Whereas the other one has a much wider acceptance of what is and is not real in the world. Um, with psychic powers and like ghosts and shit. I mean, obviously, I'd prefer that Ethan has made up a horny werewolf because he fears his own sexuality. That's more fun. Like. It's all new to my seat. That's probably where Miranda is. Let's go. Can I just bomb this? 
Why don't we just why don't we just nuke it from orbit to be sure? It seems like a man with bullets on the ground can't really fight that. Oh, it's the big ones. I think it's time for hand grenades. Can you stand next to each other? It'd be really convenient. I should remember that I don't have any healing. BSAA is the, like, United Nations Anti-Bioweapon Task Force thing, I think, which Chris is attached to, so it's odd that they would speak in that sort of third-person way about it. Hey boss, it's me. I'm at the location preparing for support fire. Might be a minute. Roger. Tundra here. Leaving some supplies in one of the houses, Captain. Help yourself. Never open these crates to take the delicious, useful items within. Only ever pick what's landed on top of the box somehow. Oh, okay, cool. Complete full healing items. Those will be useful. No, I mean, it's absolutely certain that Ethan is going to show up again. There's no real question about that. We just... <laughs> oh, nice. Automatic uh, night vision. That's a nice little touch. But yeah, so, like... Um, Metal Gear Solid was always more willing to... Uh, go in the full paranormal direction and feature characters who are psychic or ghosts or whatever the fuck. But this is, the, I think, the first time where we've actually had, like, Magneto powers happen in, in any of these games. There was some supernatural stuff that implied to happen in Resident Evil 7, but it is eventually real that the, revealed that those are all hallucinations brought upon by the, the psychotropic effects of uh, the mold itself. I mean, really, I don't even know why I'm bothering to try and pop heads. It feels stylish, but... If, if like, the magic stuff is all mold powers, like, there's, like, there's no physical component of that that makes sense. Like, is he generating electromagnetic fields or something? Just spray and pray, it's fine, don't worry about it. I kind of wish they had actually given me a rifle, though, inst instead of just a submachine gun and a pistol. <laughs> Bye. Well, exactly, I know I don't need to be careful, but it still feels- it feels appropriate to the fantasy of being, uh, you know, paramilitary Mega Man, um, Christopher Guns here. It feels appropriate to the fantasy that I try and get the headshots in. Oh, time for a grenade, definitely. Hey, stand on this? Thanks. This is actually more than I have ammo for. Well, it's not more than I have ammo for, but it's definitely more than I have ammo in my gun for. Did that kill the big one? Looks like it did. Also, notice how these guys have all stopped dropping lay. Like, I don't talk about ludonarrative dissonance much, but it is implied, at least, that the loot you're getting off the things you kill is stuff that they were personally carrying or stuff that comes from their bodies, like the weird crystal stuff. Whereas this is just, like, nothing. Did these guys actually unload their wallets today? Because they didn't for Ethan. Yeah, but then why not still just have it lying on the ground? Like, I get that it's all just gameplay abstraction, but it still appeals to me to have consistency in this stuff. I feel like that there is actually an incentive to try and pop heads and be careful with your ammunition, which is that it takes ages to reload this thing. Like, you can you can spring for like the most insane paramilitary bullshit imaginable, but you can't get an extended magazine for your rifle. 
like in real life the limitation on um in real life the limitation on things like um magazine size is that actually bullets are really fucking heavy and you can't carry more than like a hundred or so anyway all right lobo marking the target roger that boss this doesn't feel like this needed to be something I needed to do. I feel like you could have had him do this in a cutscene and it would have been fine. Reloading now. Just a minute. There's a swarm headed that way. Yeah, no shit there is. Oh, that's my sidearm. Fuck. Ah. Right, literally my back is against the wall. I still haven't taken a hit, basically. I don't know what caliber this handgun is, it sounds amazing. It's the loudest handgun I've ever heard. Ah. Getting yeah, I imagine getting shot with fire bombs will stimulate anything. Not right now, thanks. Chris's melee attack should just be punching people like he smashed that fucking boulder with his fist in Resi 6. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It is funny that we've just gone full Call of Duty at this point. Can I not take this? Yo, okay, bye. Stop fucking killing me, guys. I've got shit I need to do. If I die here after having survived everything I survived as Ethan, I'm gonna feel so embarrassed. My paramilitary buddies are never gonna stop making fun of me. Yeah, I do actually understand what I need to do, thank you. It's not my fault that um, I'm being forced back instead of cycling around the arena like I should have done the entire time. Okay, so they all die if I if I blast it. That's good to know. I do think that going Call of Duty here at the end is a little bit of a mistake. It's less, you know... It's a little bit less stakes, you know? Same place, why do I need to target this so many times? Like, it's the same target every time. Am I supposed to wipe these out first? I literally keep getting stuck on scenery. Consider how many werewolves I've already killed as well. As Ethan rather than as me, as Chris. You know, me, self critical automaton, aka Chris Redfield, famous paramilitary guy. Do you know why they call me Chris Redfield? Because the fields are red with blood. Okay, so I guess I need to deal with that guy specifically as well. The fact that they like to posture. Oh, it's okay. We got him. That's fine. <laughs> Take that. Good. Mega my seat must be below. I am way less effective as Chris than I was as Ethan. It feels kind of sad to just smash up this tiny, lovely rural, rural town. Yeah. Um. It was nice, so nice to see you. I will. Uh. I will. I found a way down. I'm going in. The rest of you stay back. I will Captain, name the final boss for you. I the mold in the village with a sample from the bakers, and uh, there's no sign of the genome editing we saw in the E series. The stuff originated here. I think I forgot to pick up ammunition at the last box. Oh well. So this is the original place that this weird shit came from. This is good to know. 
But yeah, this could have just been like one and it would have been fine. I think doing this so many times is a mistake. You good? You're fine. You're clearly going to come to life and fight me. Oh, it's it's actually that guy. This is so Dark Souls, actually. Ouch. Stop making me fight enormous men in small arenas. Is he gonna expect that guy to bomb into this weird hole? This evil was residential all along. I'm overhead, boss. Good. I'll signal with the locator. Will I? I'm down here. supposed to do that while he's slamming on me. I do think it's a shame that we switched over from latent homosexual Ethan Winters to uh, the straightest man in all of Resident Evil, Chris Redfield. He simply becomes such a large man that he is immune to serious biological problems. The pecs of Chris Redfield are so vastly dense that it is no longer a problem for him when a man hits him with a mace the size of two houses. When I said I wanted to equip the team with mace, this wasn't what I meant. Wait, not. Oh, fuck. Does Lobo have a like a, a man portable rocket launcher, or is he like a, or is he an artillery guy? Has he got actually like a, a tank somewhere that's blasting us stuff? Oh, he dropped something. See, this dropped a giant crystal mace. So why didn't the other guys drop drop their ordinary crystal skulls and their assorted pockets full of lay? See, Chris is the protagonist of every 1980s uh, action movie, which means that he is just fundamentally immune to... One of the... Actually, I've just realised one of the main problems I've been having is that I keep hitting the wrong hotkeys because the default hotkeys for Chris's loadout is um, very different to what I've been using for Ethan. That should make life a bit easier. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Chris Redfield is the protagonist of every. Well, there's. Is there a. Re... Huh, okay. It's the I'm sure it's convenient that there's one, like, giant heart fetus hybrid that is, is the big giant weak point for us to explode. Can I just. Can we just, like, can we just be done? <laughs> There's a hole in the ceiling. Alpha to squad. I've located the Megamycete. So now we can end this mess after all. About damn time. This is a man who never goes anywhere without at least four bombs strapped to his person. And two explosives armed. There's enough there to blow the whole village sky high. Let's get out of here and blow the damn place. Not before I end Miranda. I'm not taking any more chances. I'm going in. Roger that. Standing by. Captain. Are they not saying Mega My Seat? What are they saying? Keep your distance. Do not move until I give the order. I know it's too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. 
There wasn't time. Yeah, there was plenty of time. We didn't expect Miranda to act so soon. Ethan spent a lot of time wandering around doing jack shit. Yeah. Also, N2 explosive is an Evangelion reference for some reason. It's not, it's not a kind of explosive that exists in real life. They made it up for that show. Is CT two syllables? So it should should be Mega My CT. Huh. This must be Miranda's lab. Hmm. Well now. Can I not open this? Oh, there we go. What's in here? Subject, Salvatore Moreau. Cado affinity low, brain function surprisingly low. The Cado has caused drastic changes to internal organs, transforming them into organs similar to fish-like gills and a swim bladder. Another subject with irregular cell division caught him to causing him to transform into a giant fish. The subject is unable to control this transformation. Too many defects and un defects an unfit vessel for Mia. Or for... wait, for who? Ava, of course. The... Her daughter, I guess, that she's trying to resurrect through the medium of Rose? Actually, this does remind me of your bedroom, Jules. So you're right, she probably is an artist. Subject, Alcina Dimitrescu. Cato affinity, most favorable, brain function normal. Regeneration rate is incredibly fast. The subject can heal any external wound within seconds and grow her nails into claws in moments. Rapid regeneration also means increased body size. Note, due to a hereditary blood disease, the subject must ingest human flesh and blood on a regular basis to maintain regenerative properties. I suspect that if the subject's regeneration is not property balanced, then she may mutate uncontrollably, an unfit vessel for Ava. So it's all coming out now. Uh, I don't want to read that one yet. I want to read this one first. Donna Bienavento. Cado affinity, favorable. Brain function, normal despite severe mental illness. Physically, she's no different from a regular human. However, she can secrete a signal-producing substance which controls plants infected by the mutamycete. When humans absorb the pollen from a particular flower, she can cause them to have hallucinations. However, she is mentally underdeveloped and has divided her cadeau amongst her dolls in order to control them from a distance, an unfit vessel for Ava. Okay, right, so we really are just going, like, full... Um, like, what they've decided, then, with this game is that the way they want to take the direction of Resident Evil as a series is the same direction that um, Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear series went, except where instead of, like, cyber tech and psychic powers just being accepted as being able to do this stuff from step one, they're doing this, they're pivoting into, yes, you can do magic stuff with science tech, in ways that we have not previously established in the setting and ways we have sort of established are not a part of the setting. So it's really weird. A cadeau is the kind of the, um, like the parasite implant, I think. It's unclear so far, but as far as I can tell, a cadeau is the, is the like seed. Uh, it's the kind of like actual physical, this, this is a cadeau. Um, it's like a, a physical seed of the mold so infection. This to control the bio that they implant into people, and then that's how they turn them into monsters. Now this is the one I'm interested in. Let's see what Daddy Rough Trade's secrets are. Subject, Carl Heisenberg. Cado affinity, incredibly favorable. Brain functions, normal. He has electric organs similar to the electric ray, Narke Japonica. These electric organs are connected to the subject's nervous system. They can therefore pass and control electricity throughout the entire body, allowing control of magnetic fields, which is used to move metal. Oh my god, it's the same explanation for Magneto. Splendid specimen, but still an unfit vessel for Ava. Okay, so that is fucking nonsense. They have decided that there is a scientific basis for this, despite the fact that the scientific basis for this magic stuff does not match the parameters previously established in the setting throughout the entire series. Um, this is a fun this fundamentally just inconsistency, which bothers me, rubs me up the wrong way. I have a lot of potentially contradictory opinions about what makes sense and what does not make sense for a series. I feel like if you establish parameters and then you ignore those parameters, that can be an amazing change that is like, oh, fascinating. This is mind blowing. This is a fundamental like change to my understanding or whatever. But if it comes out of the blue like this, it's just kind of like, okay. Dear Miranda, my deepest apologies for not meeting you in person. 
I would love nothing more than to visit your quaint village once more. However, I am incredibly busy. We'll shoot the cadeau after this. And then again, I suppose for an immortal woman such as yourself, you no longer remember this poor half-dead medical student in the snow. I have always cherished the revelations I came to 15 years ago when I stayed in your village. I was inspired by your research to think one could transform a human by infecting them with an organism. Positively visionary. I knew that with that knowledge I could achieve my own vision for the next step in human evolution. Even after two world wars and humanity on the cusp of another, my conviction never wavered. I realised, however, through the many nights of intellectual talks you and I shared, that your conviction differed from mine. You hoped to bring back a single dead person while I aim to change the world. Your experiments on the mould would not have aided me in my endeavour to achieve an exponential infection. I thought a virus would be more infective. This is why my dear- Oh, this is fucking Wesker, isn't it? This is why, my dear, I had to leave you. I still regret never telling you goodbye. Oh, it's some other guy I've never heard of. I have no idea who Oswald E. Spencer is. My apologies for reminiscing. I actually have news that I thought might please you. I have found the key to evolution, the progenitor, a virus found in Africa. Planned to start a company with friends and colleagues dedicated to the virus research. I would call it Umbrella, just like the symbol in the cave we spoke about. I'm one step closer to making my vision a reality. I hope you'll be able to achieve, you, achieve your goal someday too. You taught me so much, and for that I will be ever in your debt. Spencer, here. No way. So I actually kind of like this. One of the things people were saying before this game started, um, which I really hoped was not the case. Uh, by the way, never say I don't do anything for you. Um, people were saying, oh, Lady Dimitrescu is, like, enormous. The other things we've seen in Resident Evil that are enormous are the tyrants. Therefore, Dimitrescu must be a tyrant. That's the secret answer to what's actually going on. It's going to turn out there's an umbrella lab under the village. And I, th I was really disappointed by that idea. I've always liked it when games are, and stories like these in general are willing to expand past... Like, the idea that everything has to be connected to what it previously is. There is this t refusal, absolute refusal, in a lot of current mass media, like, entertainment properties. That guy's head is weird. Uh, to ever just have some other stuff be happening somewhere else in the same world. Six games of it turning out to have been Umbrella all along really... You know, I'm just glad that finally we are actually stepping away from that. And people suspected this was going to be the same again. And oh, she'll turn out to be a kind of a tyrant or something. But no, this is a world in which that kind of thing exists. This is a world in which these kinds of effects can be achieved. Therefore, it is completely reasonable for there to be other times in other places people have interacted with these mechanisms. So I'm very pleased that that is turning out to be the place. Even if there is references here to Umbrella, it's not the case that this is yet another Umbrella laboratory. Uh, because I think that we should have more stories told in particular settings. You don't have to make everything always tie back into the same things, always be about the same characters. You're actually allowed to make new things sometimes. You don't have to... I'm on a soapbox again. So... Oh, right, yes. My Ava, it has been 100 years since I lost you to the Spanish flu. I was so powerless back then. But now I can bring you back to life from the Mega My Seat. I had to test your new vessel's regenerative capabilities. I took her apart and revived her in the Megamycete Regulator, the giant's chalice. All that is left is to merge her with the Megamycete. The ceremony can finally begin. After I lost you, I was so stricken with grief that I wandered into a cave to die. I wanted to be with you again, and that's when I found it, the Megamycete, completely by accident. When I touched the black substance, my mind was overcome with knowledge. The Megamycete breaks down and absorbs the consciousness of those who have perished. I knew that if your consciousness was in there too, there would be a way to bring you back. I just needed the right vessel. When I returned to the village, I implanted the villagers with mold from the Megamycete. That way I could control them, experiment on them. I have experimented on hundreds of people just to find you the perfect vessel. I even tried to increase the efficiency of finding a vessel by creating a parasite, a coup de cadeau. Yet none of the experiments came to fruition. There were some, like Alcina, who were close to perfect, but most turned into lichens. I was once approached by an organization who said they would assist me. I gave them some of your mold and your DNA, but all they created was another defect, Evelyn. Then again, not a complete failure, I learned of Rose thanks to them and knew she would be the perfect vessel. Then there was some interference, but I was able to verify her suitability. Now my research is finally complete. Ava, I have waited so long to see you again. Oh, of course, it was the Spencer Mansion. And we, it said there that Spencer founded Umbrella, so... Yeah, um... As I said, this stuff all ties back in, but I'm fine with stuff tying together, so long as there is also signs that, you know, 
There are other places at other times with other things happening. This woman has clearly been doing evil science for a hundred years. Show me your hands. Umbrise, this is Alpha. Where is Miranda right now? Still the ceremony site. Whatever she's doing, she's staying put. God damn. It really is you. I'm glad you saved me. I genuinely thought she would be dead. I was caught. Houston experiments. Wait, did you say Mia? Mia Winters? In the flesh. What's the situation up there? Kind of a war going on. Nothing we can't handle. Don't get distracted. Stick to the mission. I'm headed to the ceremony site. Wait. You can't leave me here. You promised, damn it. You said that you would keep us safe. We did everything that you asked. We moved over here, everything. And I didn't care. So long as we were together. So you tell me, where is my husband? Where is my daughter? Ethan is gone. Give her a gun, let her fight the final boss. I couldn't save him. But I can save Rose. Considering all the other magic shit that's happened, there's no reason to assume that, like, why can't Mother Miranda be in two places at once? People are very confident making a lot of, like, what do you mean he's gone? clear statements based he's on nothing. Dead. I'm sorry, Mia, but we have to leave. We have to destroy this village. No! You're wrong. Mia, there's evil resident in this village. You don't understand how special he is. Oh, here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he does have magic mold powers from the previous game then, since he has apparently survived having his goddamn heart torn out. Oh, my hand's back. So it's there? So this is a dreamscape then. It's cold. Is this him? This is him actually dying. This is this is us observing his spirit crossing over from the mortal realm. Now, nah, straight up, I don't think the hand grew back. I think this is in his head. They're like old man hands now. This shit my body. I've got to hand it to him, he's taking it all in stride. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, of course, the fingers that got bitten off at the start of the game were, <laughs> were his ring finger with his wedding ring on it, just for extremely heavy handed symbolism. Ellen? How are you here? No, I'm dad. dad. Uh, I mean, Miranda. She. Uh, no. I still have to save Rose. Rose? <laughs> it wasn't Miranda. You were always dead. What are you saying? I can still. Uh, uh, this is how I feel whenever whenever I wake up in the morning. See? Miranda didn't kill you. You mean you didn't think it was weird? No matter how much you got hurt. Remember. So this was all happening in his mind the entire time then. Or for anyone who doesn't know, these are flashbacks to the previous game. Jules, I know you know the answer. No, 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 no hints. That, that's impossible. No way. Okay, but if his body is transformed into mold and he's still running around doing human man things, then like, he's not dead. He's just changed. 
shouldn't be walking. <laughs> like, he's not meaningfully dead if his consciousness is still in the world and active and performing tasks through the medium of being a man made out of mold. Hey, nice! <laughs> he has been dead the mold time. They really broke the mold when they made this guy. Oh, Ethan, ever since those events three years ago, you've been such a fun guy. Now do you get it? Your whole body is nothing but mold. <laughs> again, that's not dead, that's just you changed. Ever see your family again. Family. No. Rose. I have to save my daughter. You're already dead. Dead. I think the music in this sequence is intentionally referential to uh, Silent Hill. Which makes sense considering these two games have... Intentionally drawn inspiration from that other series, you know, the other iconic mass market horror series in games. <laughs> Boom, straight into the loading screen. Oh my god, how much is there left of this game? I keep thinking it's about to end. Duke! Duke saved me! Did he give me a robot heart? Also, if I'm made of mold the whole time, why can't I repair my hand with magic mold powers? Where am I? My carriage, Ethan. You were having a nightmare. Like, that eaten hand is the only thing that hasn't regenerated. was a sight to see, but to think Miranda would show herself. How long have I been out? Not long till dawn. Duke, I need a favor. Take me to Miranda. I assumed as much and I'm already on the way. We should arrive shortly. Yeah, like, it turning out that him surviving all of that shit is because he actually does have magic survival powers. Like, I really like that. Your body is, well, falling apart. Yes. Foolish of me to ask. Speaking of foolish questions, who or what are you? <laughs> I'm just a guy, Ethan. That. Why, I'm just a perfectly normal man, Ethan. We're here. Just a wandering epicure se seeking one. to fill my so palate with the finest tastes. I'm afraid you can't return to your old world any longer. Yeah, I have to be. See, that sounds like it's saying, congratulations, it's time for the end game. Uh, you can't explore any of the previous places again. But I do seem to be in a place I recognize. Do I still have my stuff? Yeah. I'm still equipped like an absolute motherfucker of a small army. I never did find I never did find the key to that one chest actually. This horse does not seem in any way perturbed by the wiggly arms. So this must be genuinely the end game now because he did just give me the point of no return speech, which is an odd thing to do in a linear game. Ah, typewriter, fantastic. Okay, good. So this absolutely has to be the end of the game now, so I'm gonna try and finish this up tonight. Just gonna uh, reload the game real quick.
I am back and we are loading the game back up again. Um, I think it, he probably is just saying, I, th I think that it's actually simpler than all of the various things you're suggesting. I think that what it boils down to is that um, he, he can't go back to a normal life because he is dying now. Um, his hand is like visibly fucked up as compared to uh, it was previously. Like he's all all wrinkly and weird now. So I think that he's probably saying like, yeah, you've, you've taken enough damage that your weird freaky mold body is finally dying. Um, but even if that's not the case, then, I mean, yeah, you're right, that is just a midlife crisis. Um, like, I know exactly how he feels with my shitty body breaking down. But if that is not the case, then, oh right, I don't have, I don't have uh, Chris's vast array of incredibly dangerous handguns. But um, if it's not the case that his, that his body is breaking down, and it is actually the case that he's like, I think it might be that it's, this is where the chest was, the chest is gone. How the hell do you open that chest then? Maybe it's a New Game Plus thing, or maybe I just missed something, but really, I thought... Hmm. Or maybe it was on the other side. Let's check both. I can't I can't sprint or move very easily. He's uh, locked into being sort of staggery. It's like it's not here. What the fuck was I saying? Um, yeah, so I suspect that uh, he may have been saying, like, you can't be trusted even if you are a nice bioweapon who has retained his human faculties entirely and does not intend to be a problem he is still if there is something that can you know arrest control over these bioweapons en masse which is ultimately the goal of the bioweapons program then he can't be trusted because that thing could do that at any time so if that's the case it would make sense that he can't you know go back to his life because he can't be trusted not to be controlled by Whatever control mechanism was planned for these things. Wiggly wiggly, don't mind as they gently caress you. I gotta keep going. They're not even particularly appealing tentacles as someone who's been into tentacles. Go on Ethan, wriggle on through. Let them get a good fondle. Uh, oh, just straight into the final boss fight, okay. Is full on dark magic rituals. Oh, how I've missed you. What? This is a different baby. My power is leaving me. Rose. The mold in her brain is just like, I'm a Ollie Alti, I wanna live in this baby now. Oh, it's his cutscene gun again. Interesting. Your body certainly is normal. Yeah, that's fair. There's a lot of hot Get women in this game. No. You will see. Once I kill you properly, every Get her now! <laughs> Get her ass. <laughs> this is not a healthy environment for a baby. And you try to take it away from me. It's been a hundred years. She spent more than a lifetime. What is due? My desires will be fulfilled. Rose is mine. I feel like there was a whole cult leader aesthetic thing they were going for, which doesn't make sense because no other aspect of the game treats her as like a cult leader. Disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Megamite. Now, please do not worry for little Rose. I assure you, I'll provide her with dreams. So now you can die peacefully. 
Those bitch slaps really kind of land like a truck. This might be tougher than I'd like. Interesting. Oh hey, I can go back to the Duke. Actually, I don't think his van thing was open. I don't think I could spend the rest of my money, could I? I, I might need to have to, uh, but we will find out in a moment, I guess. Do I have to go through the cutscenes again? Apparently. Ah, little Ava, my beautiful daughter. You fulfilled your purpose. There we go. Uh, well, I don't know what her weak spot is, and I don't know what really upsets her in terms of physical interaction, so... You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Megamice. Now please do not... Oh, punished. I assure you I'll provide her with... Oh, you can cancel the healing animation, that's cool. So now you can die peacefully. Not let you get away. Okay, it looks like I guess I need to try and provoke her flailing animation while not being in There's it. <laughs> I shall this. this is weird and gross. Freaky spider monster. I'll deny you all I want. You won't interfere. Yeah, Chris, could you fucking help, maybe? Like, I'm just a guy. I've never seen a human live without his heart. Are you sure you're not? The Megamycete saved me from the pits of despair. It granted me this splendid power! Yeah, right. She sure sounds culty. This is like a boss fight from a completely different game. This is like a boss fight from a a third person platformer from, from like a mid 2000s PlayStation game. This is like a Jack and Daxter boss. Like, I mean, not in terms of aesthetic, obviously, but like in terms of design, that's what it is. Got a block with your rifle. Hold still. How many healings do I have left? Just two. This is concerning. Oh god damn it. Actually, this looks like a lot of Bo Dark Souls boss arenas. The kind of Dark Souls influence on this is amusing. There's a lot of it. I can take any form I Jokes on you, my wife is a hag. I'm a boomer. I hate my wife. Actually, Chris has that energy. If anyone does in this game. I keep going quiet because I'm focusing, because this is surprisingly, like, not difficult, but I feel like it has very little margin for error. She did not like that one. Time for the old cowboy special. <laughs> Wait, is that it? Did that fucking kill her? It's dark as hell in here now. I think it's time for that comes in my house. Oh, rest now. The hell I will. Die, 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 die. If I combine Rose with a Megamycete, my daughter will be made manifest at last! I've waited a century. A century! All for this day! 
Oh, I'm dead again. No, I'm not. Okay, fantastic. Because I haven't finished the video game yet. Presenting a lot of kind of question of questionable ideas about the ownership of children, if you ask me. I feel like I'm, I'm literally watching her attack past me like a Dark Souls boss and figuring out what I need to do. Uh, hold on a sec. If you don't mind, Mother Miranda, I just need to rearrange my items a little bit, having run out of ammunition. Oh, that's gonna hurt when that lands in two seconds when I <laughs> when I unload this. She's gonna kill me again. I definitely need to go see Duke. I think get some kind of other munitions. Yep, there we go. This might take a few tries, huh? Rose is truly my best. You are dead. Let's go back to Duke and see what he's got. I must feel like I must have some extra treasure to spend. <sighs> yeah, there's tons of it. I never... I got this as Chris. Why do I have this as, as, as Ethan? Never did find the rest of that necklace, or the other half of the mechanical part. Uh, mechanical part. There's no point in having any of the rest of these either. I never did find the rest of these. Oh, I, I feel like I must have missed quite a lot. Maybe there were a couple of secret areas that I missed that had all these uh, assorted doodads and thingamajigs. Because there was definitely... I haven't upgraded all the guns, and there was definitely a couple of combinable things that I haven't found what they combine with. Okay, an extra healing item will definitely be helpful. Extra ammunition will also be helpful. What else you got for me? What will actually help me in this final boss fight? Um, I don't think I have enough magnum bullets to make it worth getting an extra magnum cylinder. The rest of these aren't really useful to, to me in any way, actually. Gun is fully upgraded. The rifle. The rifle might be worth upgrading a bit. Um, oof, expensive. Well, I guess that will do for now. I hope that's enough to turn the tide. And I've just. Oh, he didn't give me the option of getting food. Oh, it didn't actually take me back. It just gave me the option to have the to talk to deal with him right here. <laughs> Skippy, skippy. You fulfill oh, okay. I need to one skip that time. You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious Megamice. Now, please do not worry, the little rose. I assure you, I'll provide her with true happiness. So now you can die peacefully. Not letting you get away. Die. You understand the love of a parent and a child. How can you deny me? Why the hell can't you realize Rose is my goddamn kid, not yours? Cease this foolishness. The Metamycete saved me from the pits of despair. It granted me this splendid power. Yeah, right. All it's done is drive me nuts. Is this adaptive difficulty? I seem to be taking... I seem to be smashing her phases a lot faster. Uh, 
I'm probably going to be quiet for this fight since I need to focus. It is, as they say, try as, as they say, try hard mode time. <laughs> yeah, it definitely took like a while to get to this stage previously. Now, Mr. Winters, I think it's time you left in my hands. Now is the Mr. Winters of your discontent. I will take back my daughter. Yeah, I think she's consistent in her phases as well. Okay, I think I'm not supposed to stop that one, I'm just supposed to get into cover, which she conveniently provides for me. Might be you, Miranda. You're not capable of real love. I will take back my daughter. Maybe I was just supposed to dodge her in this mode die, rather than die, die, attempting. Die, yeah, this game has been incredibly easy the whole way through, so it's weird to suddenly actually be troubled. Oh, okay. This is how you end. Well, this is how most of the fights end. Pop, pop, bitch. <laughs> Difficulty spikes are the things she keeps slamming into me. Da 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 da. Actually, aesthetically, she doesn't. She does remind me of a Final Fantasy boss as well. Motivation is compelling, but it's also kind of a really generic one. It's more about the aesthetic mis mi mismatch. Um, there's not really kind of been this cultish... The cultishness is something they establish as a component of this story and then do nothing with. Rose. Congratulations, drone, you have completed your purpose. Why is the whole muta my C T not break not not breaking and dying as well though? Ethan. Come on, Ethan. Come on, Ethan, wake up. Oh, no. oh the baby always had that sweater. Ethan. He did it. It's finished. I think we've finished each other. Now we're Ethan. Ethan, we gotta move. <clears throat> T 
Turns out there's even more bosses in this game. That doesn't feel like something I can meaningfully kill. <coughs> Move in, Ethan. There's a bomb in that thing that'll blow this whole village sky high. Hey, look at me. When I hit this trigger, we can't be anywhere near it. Ah, damn it. Mia's waiting for you. She's alive, you hear me? Alive. Oh, Mia. I'm so sorry. I love you. Keep Rose safe. Hey, hey. Hey. Say what you will about you yourself. Chris Redfield. He does know how to hold a baby correctly. As you can see, he's supporting the head and neck, which is very important when holding a baby. Watch over. Make, be strong. make sure she has my stinky jacket. God damn it. What are people sacrificing themselves in these games? Goodbye, Rosemary. Just nice to see like a, a video gamesman who clearly knows how to perform correct dad actions. So I guess ultimately the theme of this story is that of so, so many mass market Western media things of a dad will sacrifice anything for his children explodes. Which is not really the most interesting theme I can imagine. It's nice to see they kept his enormous biceps from Resi 6. He's been wearing a coat the entire game, so this is the first we've actually seen of his incredibly Where? shredded physique. <clears throat> oh, he's around, you know, he's he's kind of all over the place, you know, there's, there's, he's here and clear. he's there. No, we can't go, not without my husband. Mia, sit down and strap in. Not before you tell me where Ethan is. I know he wouldn't abandon us. Tell me what's going on. Where? What was that? I told you to sit down. Ethan lives inside you now because you're breathing in bits of him. He was hitting her for a second. Jesus Christ. He stayed so we could all escape. I'm sorry. Chris just feels like he's from a different game. You need to see this. He's playing Call of Duty while everybody else is playing. The SAA didn't send soldiers. This is a bioweapon. The hell were they thinking? Orders, Captain. Pick up the rest of the squad. Plot a course for BSAA Europe HQ. But I thought you guys work for the BSAA. Someone's gotta pay. This baby seems remarkably fine for having been split into four different pieces and recombined. What a weird, weird ending. Yeah, that's it. This We're done, though. This is the end of the game. <laughs> it turns out the evil was resident inside us all along.
So I feel like I've registered my critiques of this game pretty clearly throughout the entire game. I think it was a blast. I think that when it decides to just go completely nonsense and balls to the wall insane, it works really well. When it is being a pastiche of every major horror movie of the last 50 years, it is great. I think it is a major flaw when they decide to try and ground it back again, the way that Resi games are traditionally grounded in these ideas of like techno-futurism and bioweapons and stuff. Um, I think honestly if it had in fact turned out to have been a journey to the centre of the mind as we learn about the various anxieties of Ethan Winters, um, I would have been delighted. I would have very much preferred if that had been the case, especially since I spent like a whole stream just interpreting each of the four bosses and what they might represent. <laughs> with regards to Ethan's inherent insecurities. But it turned out the real insecurity that he had deep inside was that he might turn out to have been made of mold all along. This credits animation is actually the, um, the opening animation to the game. When you start playing, you are told a children's storybook tale, which Mia is, is reading to baby, baby Rose. Um, supposedly a local fairy tale from the region of Europe in which the game takes place. It's about a, a small girl who gets lost in the forest and is offered various um, treasures by what are very clearly the four lords, the four bosses you fight throughout the game. The first three offer her treasures. When she meets the fourth one, she just assumes that it's offering her a treasure as well, steals its golden cog. And then it's like, hey, you can't take that without permission. That's not cool. And then they all turn up to punish her and a witch arrives. And that's the end of the story. Gifts we gave. She snarled. So more, in turn, is due. In a blink, the girl was trapped inside a mirror. Is that Ethan? Her parents, though, had searched all day and at last arrived. With rampant rage, father fought the witch, while mother's loving touch shattered the dark enchantment. But the witch was strong, and father yelled, Save our daughter! So mother bore their child to safety as the forest was consumed. Sure is gender in this ending animation. Sure is, sure is a lot of traditional roles applied to these two individuals. Sacrifice. To this day, any child who stares too long into the charred wasteland will be haunted by nightmares of getting lost while picking berries. Hello, my so. <sighs> As a game, I think this was a blast. I had a fantastic time all of the way through. And oh, hey, thank you so much for um, for following if that noise was someone following me, which I think is what it is. I am, I am delighted to have you join the team. Is this a team? But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This is, this was Resident Evil 8. It was an absolute blast for most of it. I have I think my, my clearest criticisms are that it's thematically a mess because I really thought they were going for a whole journey to the center of the mind and we see various different bosses that represent uh, Ethan's inherent insecurities and so on. I thought this was going to end with it turning out that three years ago he never escaped the mold and this was all happening in his head as he had mold delusions from the end of the previous game. Um, but even if it was just a total, total turnaround for the series and was just a fantasy story that they would had decided to tell under the same brand. I would have been delighted by that as well. Um, I think that mechanically it's fun, but it's much more akin to a, um, what you would call a, uh, an interactive film than a, a kind of a mechanical game because there are, there are basically two kinds of games. There are games that are based in their mechanics and there are games that are based in their, um, in their kind of narrative and that are scripted based on on scripted events occurring rather than on um versatile mechanical systems that interact with one another consistently throughout the game the trick this game game tries to pull is that it pretends to be one, one of these consistent mechanical experiences while actually being incredibly scripted and everything is scripted the whole way through i think that if you took for example castle dimitrescu made it two three times as big and simply had a set of mechanics where you are openly hunted throughout that space as you achieve a variety of goals in your own, in whatever order you please, uh, exploring it at whatever rate you think is suitable. I think that that would make for a great game. 
which I get, I get that I'm basically just describing Alien Isolation, but Alien Isolation was brilliant, and I would have loved to play Alien Isolation, except you're hunted by a hot vampire um, instead of a hot xenomorph. Um, so mechanically, that's kind of interesting. The shooting feels great, even though it is badly designed shooting as a shooter. There are enemies that just kind of wander towards you. Their reactions are not tied to what you do to them in any way. There is no mechanical interaction. You can shoot them in the body or in the head. Head is bonus damage. You don't stagger them if you shoot them in the legs. You don't stagger them if you shoot them in the head. They just stagger naturally by themselves. I assume these old illustrations are tied in some way to the story we've just heard and um, possibly to Ethan's own story. Or possibly this is the story of uh, the baby that died originally that um, this woman tried to resurrect thus provoking the entire, um, you know, entire plot of the narrative. Yeah, see, he's taking, he's taking her, this is, I guess this is the cult leader plot that they basically scrapped. As we, as we head in here, with these images showing as a chapel. His wife died, he's taken his baby in here. Nobody wears plague doctor masks like that anymore. I mean, to be honest, they didn't look like that then, but... They said that this was during the Spanish flu, though, so perhaps this is taking place earlier, because absolutely no one was wearing plague doctor masks like that during the Spanish flu. So if this is supposed to be her daughter dying during the Spanish flu, then... Wait, but the mother died, not the daughter. I, I don't know what these illustrations are. But yeah, so mechanically, I think it's it's somehow weak but incredibly compelling. The designs are extremely stupid, but when they're when they're fun, they're so fun. They're absolutely delightful. I'm in this odd position. Yeah, her daughter, her daughter Evelyn died. Um, Evelyn from the previous game. No, her daughter Ava died. Her daughter Evelyn. Evelyn is unrelated. Evelyn is the is the creepy girl from the previous game. She's the one who showed up in the hallucination towards the end of this game. And Ava was her daughter who died 100 years ago of the Spanish flu and that imprinted on the muta my CT that she's been trying to bring back. So what we're actually seeing here is the downfall of the village. This is how the village went from being a village full of alive people to a village full of werewolves. Um, they all came to Mother Miranda for an inoculation and she injected them with the cadeau. Um, which is what we've just seen in the past several pictures, and as you can see, they are slowly succumbing. So the implication is that this was a slow change that took place over a long period of time, rather than simply just instantaneous. And because here is that daughter, her mother died, her father took her to get inoculated, everybody got inoculated, and here she is watching him eating a dead horse. Try not to read into too <laughs> read too much into the eating of the dead horse. Um, it's only one letter away, after all. But yeah, so I'm in this odd position where I I feel like I cannot help but criticise this game. I have a, so many criticisms of it, and yet I super enjoyed my time with it. I think it was delightful and entertaining the whole way through. It was mechanically fun, even though it kept pretending to have greater mechanical depth than it did by a huge margin. Closing the book symbolizes the end of a story, but something tells me this story isn't over. Do you think the little boy will be able to touch the moon? Not that he can touch the moon, it's too far away. Wait, what if he has a rocket ship? Uh, okay, then he can touch it, but it'd be very, very cool. Is this like 15 years later and that's- You were being silly, I know. <laughs> and that's Baby Rose? Astonishing to think people will still be wearing shitty knockoff Chuck Taylors in 15 years. I guess, say what you want about Ethan Winters, he sure rose to the occasion. Oh shit, you're right, she is wearing exactly the same outfit as the guy from uh, Watch Dogs. <laughs> Sorry I missed last week. Really? A kind I husband and loving father? 
You know how it is. That's what you inscribe on the grave of this man? Not, he turned into a mold monster and then killed an entire village of people? Talk of the goddamn devil. Duty calls. I love you. I think it's cool that they made her look like Mia. Yeah, I found her. Where else? The day of all days. <clears throat> We have a situation. You're needed, <laughs> Evelyn. Don't you ever call me that again. Whoa, whoa, it's just a joke, Rose. I can show you things even Chris doesn't know I can do. We have a clear shot. He is Stand acting out. casually with this person who can clearly turn him inside out with mold powers if she wants. Just a kid. <sighs> Way to keep it together, Rose. I mean, I guess, technically, yeah, like, Mold Ethan must have Mold impregnated oh, Mia with his Mold dick. Like, he wasn't made of human stuff ever since the end of the previous game, and the baby is no. born, like, two years after the previous game. I guess you could say she was molded in the image of her father. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> I'm delighted by my own puns, even if nobody else is. Interestingly though, this locks them into a certain lack of stakes for the next several Resident Evil games, because unless they have a 15 year time skip, we know that for the next 15 or so years, there is absolutely, there is no world ending threat. Like, if we play the next Resident Evil and they're like, if they release this virus, it will be the end of the world. It just fucking isn't gonna be, because we can see that, like, Mold Baby mold baby Rose is fucking fine as a 15-year-old, like. Difficulty standard completion. Don't say results and then don't give me, like, a a grade. I need a... I need some, I need some kind of, 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 of grading system. Please, tell me how I did. <laughs> did I get an A? Please. Challenge completed. I've completed the following challenges. Oh, I, I earned 92010 challenge points. I got not liken this, four lords, that sucked, got no strings, fish out of water, up yours. Do these say what they are? No. When you load completed data, some things will carry. Okay, so this even has a new game plus. That's pretty cool. I will talk about all of the moldy dicks I please. I think, I think... That is only my prerogative as a streamer. You come, you come to my, you, you come to, you come to me on this, the day of my daughter's in moldening, and you tell me not to talk about moldy dicks on my stream. Extra content. Let's see what we've got. The mercenaries. It does have the mercenaries uh, bonus mode. I'm delighted. Um, a lot of Resident Evil games have had this bonus mode, which is essentially just uh, like a combat challenge mode. There's also the WCX. Uh, which is Chris's rifle and Chris's handgun. Oh, he's got an assault rifle as well. I didn't get to use that. There was only the WCX and the USMAI. Um, finish the story on hardcore difficulty to unlock a hand cannon. Rocket pistol. Laser sword? If you complete SS rank in mercenaries, you unlock, the, you unlock a goddamn lightsaber. That's cool. Infinite ammo for the lemmy. Uh, and an assorted assortment of other things. Oh shit, that's a lot of... This is a really inconvenient menu system. So you can unlock character models to view. A lot of games do this. In fact, I'm actually really pleased about this. If this is something games don't often do. Um, don't often do anymore. Which is giving you um, unlockable bonus like content. Some games have these kind of... Um, Oh, well, that's what I was talking about previously, about the idea that, like, it might be 15 years later, or it might just be they'll set more games in the intervening time, and we'll just have to accept that, like, there are no stakes, because we know everything will be fine. Where is the... There is, there is no, like, easy way to scroll up and down, which is really irritating. Um, if you use mouse wheel, you still only uh, increment it by one step at a time. I will obviously be buying my beloved Alcina and her incredibly attractive daughters.
what else is there? Concept art. See, um, games including galleries of concept art, of 3D models, which you can view in a 3D model viewer, all of this kind of stuff. I, It is kind of a lost art. Nobody really does that anymore, which is a huge shame if you ask me, because if you have all of this content, why not include it in there? At least for people who've completed the game. I really appreciate that they kind of modeled her chunkily, like, she's extremely exaggerated, but, like, the exact forms of her are, are quite realistic to a, a large and voluptuous woman. Um, I had, can I not zoom in on her face? That's really what I want to do here. Oh well. Yeah, exactly, like, she doesn't have a perfect ass. She has a really nice ass, but it is, it has those kind of, like, it has a realistic shape rather than a kind of a perfect games industry bubble, shall we say. I think the daughters are mostly the same. Oh, they're all wearing they're all wearing fishnets. You never see that in the game, but they're all wearing all wearing fancy stockings. That's cool. There's no explanation why they turned into bugs, actually. They reacted completely differently to implantation than anybody else did this is all this is all post game now i'm like i'm like this is just me tidying up at the end of the stream it's nice it's nice to see all this stuff flashback village of shadows oh there's a documentary about making that that's a nice thing to have uh oh shit i might actually watch these on my own time i would be really interested to see some of these it's really cool of them to include free like um, special material stuff in here. I'm really pleased by this because I actually have a collection of like the art of whatever um, books for games and movies because I'm fascinated by the art and design that goes into these products. The art of games. There was an explanation in the dairy in the, in the castle, yeah, but it sounds like she was maybe not like... She didn't exactly have permission to... Um, to do the various things she did, maybe. Like, it's odd that there would have been these... You know, you get to Mother Miranda's laboratory and there's, expl there's like, her notes, like, her science notes on causing each of these particular unique mutations and her, no her noting the ways in which they are different from the ordinary... Um, the ordinary ways that people have mutated into lichens. So, I think that that's interesting. Like, that Alcina does not... Uh, that the Dimitrescu daughters don't have the same... Uh, the same thing applied to them, even though they also have unique mutations. It, it's kind of, it kind of elides them entirely and talks about, oh, there's these four unique mutations and everyone else turns into a, um, into a lycan. But no, there's these other... there's these daughters who turn into... Uh, weird, like, insect swarms. Oh, the challenges. Let's see what I got. Survive the lichen attack, escape the mine, defeat, 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 defeat. Place the chalice, defeat Heisenberg. Okay, so that's all just complete the game on the basic difficulty and the standard difficulty. Those are all the game unlocks. These ones are from the harder difficulties. Craft things. These are all just, these are all just progress unlocks. None of these are particularly interesting. None of these are actually challenges. Combine a treasure, combine things, hunt an animal, hunt 40 animals, solve a labyrinth. Oh, there were two labyrinths I never finished either. I never did find... find what those were. Break, uh, break, bro every breakable window in Castle Dimitrescu. I'll have to try that one. Open the door in every outhouse. Um... Oh, I could have tried to shoot those down, and I didn't think to. I feel like a few of these are for New Game Plus, such as... Defeating Urias during the first Lycan attack. Incidentally, if you do defeat Urias, he's still just there in all of the cutscenes subsequently. That's the, um... 
Oh, I completely zoned out and was looking at this stuff without thinking about chat. Hi, sorry about that. Um, assuming there is a 15 year time skip before the next game, that is possible, but um, I don't think there will be a time skip. I think they will just pretend that there are stakes that there clearly are not. And um, yeah, it's a shame that you never get the magic knife. It just you get it and then it kills her and then you throw it away and it's just kind of that's one of my criticisms of this game that it introduces all of these things that then just sort of like abandons and never goes back to. There's a lot of ideas and implications and it's both true narratively with things like the knife, things like the cult, etc. Um, but it's also true mechanically. The most frustrating thing I found throughout the entire game was that it kept gesturing at being a systemic experience, um, at simulating environments and mechanics for you to interact with the, those environments and with the things in those environments. And then instead of doing that, it's completely linear. Um, even in the like one like hunter section in the game when you're actually being hunted, it's only for about five minutes. All of the sort of implicit hunting in the castle sequence is scripted, except for the very end. And you only ever need to travel between about two rooms, so you are never actively hunted because you are never trying to navigate an environment while being chased. Or not being noticed or whatever. Defeat a Samco with a landmine. I can't remember what the Samcos were. I do think I'll play through this again, in all honesty. I, I did really enjoy it. I think I will try the next difficulty up and see what I can do on New Game Plus. That's weird. I wonder what those numbers mean. Looks like I missed seven goats. I missed one... no, I didn't. I missed f four files in the entire story. So I found almost all of those, which makes me feel like I found most things. And then, yet there were still those kind of keys that I never... never found. It feels re impossible to beat this game only using the knife. It doesn't do enough damage, surely. Looks like the rest of these are the mercenaries. Okay, well, thank you so much everyone who has been here and has stuck with me through this ridiculous goddamn game. I've had a blast playing it. Um, I feel like I have blurred from playing game to talking about uh, narrative and themes and all of that stuff on and off throughout the entire thing in a fairly adequate way, but... Um, I have had a good time. I hope everyone else has had a good time over this several goddamn hours of Resident Evil Village. That is going to be all from me for today. Uh, if anyone here does not already know it, I have a YouTube channel where I do really good in-depth Let's Plays. I'm currently halfway through a Let's Play of the original Dishonored and uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, thank you so much for being here. That's all. Goodbye. <laughs>